three years, game day in Knoxville, Tennessee begins outside Neyland Stadium on Volunteer Boulevard with the ball walk. Down Peyton Manning pass. Down Phil Fulmer away from the football complex. Led by Smokey and the head coach. And ending inside Neyland Stadium where 107,000 have been waiting many for hours to greet the volunteers on the field. All part of one of the great home field atmospheres in college football. And today, they kick off the 2001 season ranked eighth in the country and playing host to the Syracuse Orangemen. And welcome to Knoxville. I'm Dave Barnett. I'm joined today by Mike Golick, Bill Curry, and in a moment, Michelle Tafoya. This has been a short but very memorable series between these two. They've only played twice previously, and the last time was the opener of the 98 season for Tennessee, and it almost cost them what became a 13-0 national championship season. They had to survive Donovan McNabb over and over, took a last play field goal to win at the Carrier Dome, 34-33. Now, Mike, today, regardless of whatever the final score is, this part will be memorable. We're going to see at least two of maybe the three best defensive linemen in the country. Now we're talking about it. We're going to defense. We're going to the real athletes of the team. And both Tennessee and Syracuse had two of the finest. Different sizes, and they do it a different way, but both very effective. John Henderson, the D tackle from Tennessee, six foot seven, 290 pounds. He collapses the pocket with his leverage and quickness and long arms. Dwight Freeney, 6'4", 250 pounds. He knows how to come around the corner. You'll also see him lined up at linebacker as well. They want to use him in as many spots as possible to try and free him up. But, Bill, I certainly know Mr. Freeney and his teammates will have a lot more to contend with than just the volunteer players. Oh, indeed they will. In 1983, we brought our Georgia Tech team down here to play. I heard a kind of a raspy voice delivering the invocation, so I asked the security man who he was, and he said, that's Reggie. He prays, too. Reggie White was here to pray and to play. I knew we were in trouble. Well, Syracuse is not going to have to deal with a minister of defense today, but they are going to have to deal with an aroused Tennessee team and a hundred 107,595 of their closest friends here today. David? Bill Curry, with four decades of experience inside the Eland Stadium, the pride of the Southland band forming the traditional tee as the 2001 version of the Tennessee Volunteers readies to make their first appearance on the field inside Neyland Stadium. to precede them onto the field. Homer has them gathered. Started the year rank number eight in the country. Last year, subpar by their standards. An eight-win, four-loss season, ending with a defeat at the Cotton Bowl to Kansas State. presentation of college football is brought to you by Holiday Inn Express, the smart choice for travelers who want to stay smart. And by Nortel Networks, we're building the new high-performance internet. As always inside Neyland Stadium, everywhere you look, all you see is Tennessee Orange. As the eighth-ranked balls prepare to open their 2001 season, and host the Syracuse Orangemen. Let's welcome the fourth member of our crew on the sidelines for us this afternoon, Michelle Tafoya. Well, Dave, as you said, Tennessee went eight and four last year, and around here, that's a down year. So they are hoping to rebound behind sophomore quarterback Casey Clawson. Now, Clawson is a Southern California kid, grew up the son of a high school coach, but he wanted to play college ball in the Southeastern Conference environment. So far, this 
this environment has agreed with him nicely. Last year, he broke Peyton Manning's freshman records for touchdown passes and passing yardage. So that alone has raised the expectations about him. He told me he's added about 10 pounds to his frame, but that his biggest improvement has come in his understanding of the offensive game. But still, with those high expectations, he said the advice he's going to take to heart is what his dad, the high school football coach, told him a few weeks ago when he said, son, just shut up and play. <laughs> Always good advice, isn't it? You know, you know, my dad used to tell me that. He used to just leave out the, uh, my dad used to leave out the end play part. You know, just kind of <laughs> shut up. So. Could we get him Stop. to join our crew? <laughs> Tennessee wins the toss and defers. Syracuse waiting for the opening kick from Dustin Colquitt. And they have Maurice Jackson and James Mungro back deep. Very high kick. Jackson brings it from the four. And a very short return it is of only nine yards as Tad Golden has the tackle for the Volunteers. And now Troy News, who showed his toughness in the kickoff classic at the Meadowlands last week, twice knocked out of the game by Georgia Tech, but twice returned. And the junior from Butler, Pennsylvania, ended up with a career high, 19 out of 32. Mungro, the senior tailback with Kyle Johnson, now a graduate student, back after multiple injuries. Jackson, Campbell, and Manley form the receiving crew for noon. Starting from the 12 in the offset eye. And the first carry on the ground will lose a yard for Mungro. And he says hello to the Tennessee defense led by the middle linebacker, Dominique Stevenson. The offensive front for the Orange men. Alexander, O'Connor, Romeo Burton, and Deloach. Four seniors up there. And Romeo is the sophomore. And arguably the best defensive line of the country right here. Absolutely. We talked about Henderson in the open. Watch out for Will Overstreet. He knows how to take advantage of all the attention going to Mr. Henderson. They give Mungro the line of scrimmage. So second and ten. Motion from Jackson. A little more room up the middle this time, and it'll be third down. The linebacking core for Tennessee. We've already seen Stevenson, Moore, and Whiteside. And Stevenson is the leader. They're counting on him to be the Al Wilson of this unit to provide the great leadership and a whole lot of tackles. Pretty experienced secondary with Lott and Gaines, the corners, and Battle and Baker, the starting safety. The only new starter is Battle, junior college transfer from L.A. Valley College. With three... On the pattern now, Noon, well protected, and the throw is incomplete. Nearest man to it was David Tyree. Quick three and out, turned in by the Tennessee defense. Boy, that's certainly something you, you don't want to hear if you're in Syracuse, is this crowd staying in the game early like they are. Great three and out by this defense. Syracuse struggled last week offensively, and they need to get it in gear early in this game. <laughs> There has been a switch in the kicking rolls after last week. Justin Sujanski, a freshman, is going to handle the placements. And Mike Schaefer concentrates on punting and kicking off. And Tennessee, after the return by Eric Parker, is going to start off in terrific field position. The punt only 32. Parker brings it back 11. And the sophomore starter and quarterback out of Northridge, California, Casey Clawson, as we saw, broke Peyton Manning's freshman records last year. Won every start, all six of them, during the regular season. It is Travis Stevens' turn after backing up Jamal Lewis and Travis Hendry most of his career. He's now the tailback. Bartholomew, the fullback, has always great speed at the wideouts with Stallworth Parker and the tight end Finlayson. From the 37, going for it right away, and it is caught for a touchdown by Stallworth, 37 yards. I wonder 
time Peyton Manning ever threw a <laughs> touchdown pass on his first pass of the season. I don't know if he ever did that, but I'll tell you, if this kid keeps throwing like that, uh, they won't make him forget Peyton, but they sure will remember him. Alex Walls, the top kicker probably in the SEC this year, one of the top last year makes it seven to nothing. Stallworth caught five of Tennessee's six longest catches last year, and he starts 2001 scoring from 37 on the season's first snap. One play, 7 to nothing, Tennessee. Pretty much a called shot by Casey Clark. <laughs> I'm telling you, he sat right there, looked us in the eye, and said, yeah, they told me this year, if I get zero coverage where they got press man, I can put it up any time I want to. He didn't <laughs> wait long, did he? That's the way a quarterback is supposed to think. Like getting the keys to the car, huh? Oh, man. <laughs> keys to the Ferrari, in this case. Well, not even two minutes ago, Dustin Colson had the opening kick. And this time Jackson returns from the eight. And plenty of room. Only Cole put there, and he slows him down long enough to get help at the 45. 37-yard return by Maurice Jackson, and a big difference from that first start for Syracuse. And this is what Casey saw when he looked out. A little jiggle, a marvelous route by Stallworth. That's not nearly as easy as it looks. That's hours and hours of practice in the summer. The coaching staff's counting on Stallworth to be the man this year, and he's off to the right kind of start. Well, first off, when you're in that press coverage, uh, Ford's got to get his hands on the receiver if you're going to go out and play tight man. Warsman started with a couple on the wing, now uh, shifting to the right side. They get blockers out there for Mungro. He's picked up right as he's about to turn the corner. And again, a tackle by Dominique Stevenson. Oklahoma and Air Force underway. Reese Davis, an update. Dave, Oklahoma's offense has sputtered. You remember against North Carolina, their last nine possessions ended with punts. But finally, they get it going. Quentin Griffin picking his way beautifully. It's going to stretch for the pile. I didn't quite get it in there, but the Sooners were pounded in, and they're on top by a touchdown late in the first. Air Force gets them at a good time. Is there a home home? Well, <laughs> if there's going to be, you get him at home at least. Coming off the big win, Oklahoma is, yeah. Mungro with a first down. Two nice holes. And the senior tailback written down after a gain of 10 by Eddie Moore. Well, this is certainly what Syracuse has to get going. Last week against Georgia Tech, 59 yards rushing on 26 carries. But 30 of those came on one carry, so really only at 29 yards on 25 carries. Opening up this running game, Bill, for Syracuse, they have that option. The pass could really open up their offense. And they are running at the strength of Tennessee's defense, John Henderson. One of those numbers against Georgia Tech. Syracuse, nothing if they're not experienced offensively. They start nine seniors. Again, Mungro. Yeah. And hello, <laughs> Mr. Henderson. <laughs> John said, I don't like this stuff yeah. more than once. I'll let y'all run one, and I'm going to take over now. Boy, he's something else. You know, he can hit the gaps with those long arms here. He ends up playing man up right in the middle of the screen here. He's just going to play man up. He's not blowing a gap here. He's just playing in front of his man, gets the hands out. Look at the extension on the hands. That's the key for a defensive lineman. Extend those arms, and when you're 6'7", you can really push that offensive lineman away. makes you get away easily. Allen Trophy winner is a junior. SEC leader, 12 sacks, and equally dangerous against the run, as he just showed. Off of one. And the pitch on second and 11. Monroe with the flag down. Hurdles head over heels to the 39. Tackled by Jabari Greer. We'll wait for the indication from Jack Kramer. This is a Big East officiating crew. I, I believe it's going to be on Campbell for blocking back toward the ball below, below the waist. That's what it is. Right. Malik Campbell, number 10. He knows it. You've got to stay up if you're coming back toward the ball. This is to protect the defender's knees. It's a very good rule, and it's a standard thing. And Malik Campbell, being a veteran, should be able to know better. There he is right there. He's going below the waist. He touches that knee, and that's a penalty. And that's a good rule, too. That's very dangerous. A receiver coming down in toward the linebacker since so him going low. 
<laughs> Coach B is saying, just hit him, hit him in the chest. Hit him in the face, hit him in the mouth, but don't hit him in the knees. And he said, Coach, did you see that guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't say that. I think he just said, yes, sir. This is the thing that's baffling the Syracuse staff. Their squad prepared so well. This is a very strong fundamental coaching staff, and they're doing little fundamental things incorrectly, and it's costing them. First game, and now again in this one. With the mark off, they now look at second and 23. They need the 32 of the ball. And under some pressure, Munro takes the swing pass at least back in Tennessee territory and ridden out at the 49-yard line by Rashad Baker, the free safety. When you're a big old hog offensive lineman like number 76, Sean O'Connor, you just dream of the day you can get out in front on a screen and just lead this guy. Here he comes from the right guard. Now, Sean, you run through the defender. Run, 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 now, run, run through. Son. Don't run for a touchdown, son. You don't have the ball. <laughs> Gracious. Again, a fundamental thing. Third and 17. And Noon's out of the shotgun. Plenty of time, steps up, throws a strike. This is going to be very close for the first down as Johnny Morant, sophomore out of Parsippany, New Jersey, has 16 yards. I think he's just short. Pass complete to Morant. Again with the tackle. Nice pass by News. Get the ball down the field. They were in an obvious passing situation, something they don't want to have to be in. Good protection, good job by News. And they're short. I guarantee you they're going to go for it. And Dave, I'm sure you'll tell them why with the kickers. I handle this replay. Good job in the pocket. Good chip on the ball. Leading the receiver up a little bit out of the defender's way. Turn it up the field, try, but he ends up about a yard short. Yeah, the kicking situation, to put it mildly, in flux this week. Mike Schaefer, 7 of 21 last year and last week. No longer will handle the face. This would have been about a 50 yarder instead on fourth and one. They run Noons on the option keeper, and Noons had only. The strong safety, Julian Pavel, presenting a touchdown. The fumble may have been after he was already out of bounds. I think they mark him out at the 15, a gain of 19 yards as Noon runs the option. I really like Troy Noons. I really do. Tennessee lines up in a Bears defense, meaning they're covering both guards and the center. It's the old 46 defense. Mike Golick was the nose guard. You can see this group right in here in the middle. And that's the reason it's called the Bears made it popular. And the option is unstoppable on that defense. It's an automatic. Noons went to it after he got lit up last week. You might wonder if he'd want to run that thing, but he didn't hesitate for a second. Nice play. And uh, Sean O'Connor, starting guard from Morristown, New Jersey. George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator, says uh, this is the heart and soul of our offensive line. Three-year starter. And they check on him with 9.16 to go in the first quarter, Tennessee 7-0. Well, they worked on Sean O'Connor's nose uh, for just a couple of moments, and then he got up, jugged off, and with the helmet back on, apparently won't be out long. Eric Kalyanidis has replaced him for first and 10 orange men the Tennessee 15. Motion from Tyree. And out of the offset eye, another cross sweep from Mungro. And he squeezes out six yards, most of it after contact. I had serious questions, Mike, about whether Syracuse could move the ball at all on this Tennessee defense, and I believe they've already had them. They've thrown and caught. They've executed the option against the Bears defense, and now they're run the ball. A nice seven-yard gain on first down. And, and they've hit an inside run and an outside run a little bit to stretch the defense. Mungro just kicking the hole, and, and he was stopped at the line and pulled out six yards. It's great options at second and four. You saw O'Connor back in. They fixed up the bloody nose, and he only missed a play. Let's send it down to Michelle. Well, guys, coming into this game, Phil Fulmer said Syracuse had an advantage of having played one game already. Sometimes the most improvement from game one to game two is that's where you see it in the season, and I'll finish that up after the play, Dave. News worried, yeah, but Tennessee has seen our off-season changes, and we don't know what their off-season surprises are going to be. He said probably if there's an advantage, it's for the ball. Tight end move. 
the little things that just kill Syracuse on offense a week ago. Same thing, Manley jerking in his stance. They're veteran players. Okay. They're not intimidated by this stuff. Shouldn't be making these mistakes. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. All right, and Graham Manley, Paul Pasqualoni, his 11th year. Biggest uh, win total in Big East history, 48. Uh, two penalties already in last week. Never a good time. This is really a bad time. As they back up and snap it at the 14-yard line. Option went off the back of the fullback. And the scramble at the 18-yard line is won by Tennessee. The Volunteers get the recovery. Well, one way to defense the option is to take the options away, and that's exactly what number 37, Eddie Moore, did. The strong side linebacker, he came flying down the line and forced Noons to pitch right away so quickly, Mungro wasn't ready for it. I believe it went off the fullback's back before it even got to Mungro. You're going to see from the left side of your screen, here he comes, flying in. He's forcing the option. It hits Kyle Johnson in the back. Mungro tries to scoop it up, trying to make a play. They always teach you fall on the ball, but I, but Billy, he had some room around him. He tried to pick it up to make a play. Good job by Moore forcing that pitch. And a poor pitch by Noons. The first mistake by the quarterback right off the fullback's back. Not on the pitch course for his tailback. Julian Battle telling all about the recovery. The mistakes continue despite the experience offensively for Syracuse. Now already up 7 to nothing. Second place is Trimmage. Crossing now 2 for 2 as they unveil a prize 21-year-old freshman. Fresh from the Florida Marlins minor league system. That's Kelly Washington. Great size at 6'4", 225, and terrific speed. Washington also listed at second team quarterback, but they said yesterday he'd see some time at wideout before we saw any time at quarterback if he did indeed get any sense behind center today. Well, Philip Fulmer is so excited about him, and he really challenged Kelly. I was at practice with Philip on Thursday, and he said he's been holding his hamstring for about a week and a half, and I told him, if you don't practice hard today, you're not playing. But he ran like a gazelle. And here he is. Here it is. Offensive coordinator for the ball, Randy Sanders, 13th year on the Tennessee staff, is third in charge of the offense. Five seconds added to the game clock. I'll tell you what, that last play, Dante Stallworth, who caught the 37-yard touchdown pass, had Will Ford up on him again, and he was clapping and yelling to Clawson, look, he's doing it again, he's doing it again, let's call the same play. But Clawson went the other way, said, I'm going to spread the wealth around. First down, three wideouts right side. And they run it for Stallworth, he's got plenty of room, and a nice clearing block out front by Tony Brown. Now let's find out what's happening with Colorado off their upset Boston State into the studio. And Dave taking on Colorado State. Nothing before Bush oh gets God. settled down, finds Joel Dressen, and he's got a 14-7 game in the second. All right, first college game at brand new Invesco Field in Denver. Tennessee has seen three out of three for 62 yards and a touchdown by Casey Clawson. They just keep tossing this one, and that's almost a backwards pass. Going in the Stolworth direction of Stolworth and his first incompletion. Well, it's a nice job by Josh Thomas. The reason it looked like a backward pass is because Thomas batted it. He's six foot seven. He got those big hands up. That's another nice gain if he doesn't get to make that play. Mike, you guys, you do line and really work on that, don't you? Uh, when you see the ball thrown, you've got to get those hands up. If you're not getting to the quarterback, you've got to get in the line of sight and get those time that jump. Josh, sophomore defensive end, which is Park New York. Lawson with total freedom under the line to make a change this year. And finally, Travis Stevens 
And he has waited his turn, hasn't he? Stevens played on that 98 national championship team, backing up Lewis, but not in the Fiesta Bowl victory over Florida State. After Lewis, it was Travis Henry who had 1,300-plus yards last year. Now, as a senior, Travis Stevens, finally the feature back. Well, he had four starts in that 98 season. I'm sure he thought he was the back of the future there, but he's the, the definition of he waited his turn right now. He's got one year to do it. It'll be third and five. They come right after Clarkson. Felt the pressure, stepped up, and now fires it to the goal. We're not looking for the ball. Instead, looking to throw a downfield block on Keon Walker. And a flag down after the throw. Stallworth thought he had turned it up and he was going to run with it. Casey's smart enough to know that he's not going to win any foot races, so he just pulls up and he's going to hit his speedster, but he hit him in the back. Nice to have a receiver that'll do that for you, though. Well, that was Casey Clawson's first look at Dwight Freeney up close and personal, and he shook him pretty well. Gets the offense. The 10-yard penalty in the previous spot. Repeat, third down. Dwight Freeney, you'll see him all over the place. He, he doesn't get touched here. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm sure they don't want that to happen a lot, but Clawson does a nice job stepping inside him. Freeney's used to those free runs and just barreling into the quarterback. He might have to break down a little bit on Mr. Clawson. Those 13 sacks last year in only seven games. He had two in the opener against Georgia Tech. For at least a couple, almost every game. A real treat to see him and Henderson. Clawson overthrown as he tried to go deep and again had a receiver wide open, Eric Parker this time. First play from scrimmage, it worked to Dante Stallworth this time, overthrown by Clawson. But the Tennessee coaching staff, most notably Randy Sanders, knows right now is that the corners cannot run with his Tennessee wide receivers, and that's fairly typical for Tennessee. They'll be putting it up a bunch. On the punt for the first time, Dustin Colquitt. Redshirt freshman from here in Knoxville, part of the great punting legacy at the University of Tennessee. And that one sailing over Malik Campbell for a touchback. Midway in the first quarter, Tennessee, after scoring on the first play from scrimmage, up 7 up. 7 0 Tennessee. Syracuse will have it for their third possession. Getting on the 20, last possession, they threaten. And then the same thing that Tennessee, that the Syracuse fans have seen last couple of years from Troy Noons, good play after good play, followed up by horrible play. That pitch off the back of the blocking fullback, Kyle Johnson. Just something you cannot do. It's one of those inexcusable mistakes by a quarterback that practices the option every day. And they felt after off-season work, that what they see from Noons this year was not only good decisions before the snap to get things organized, get them into the right play, but good decisions after the snap as well. More interceptions than touchdowns last year. He just got to become consistent. Tennessee got ripped by the option in the Cotton Bowl. I mean, Kansas State just lit him up with the option. You know Syracuse is going to use it, but you got to know your quarterback's going to pitch it to the right place. They take the shotgun drop, quarterback keeper all the way for a good gain of 12 yards for noon. And down we go to Michelle Kafoya. A day pretty impressive that Syracuse just did that, considering they lost one of their offensive linemen. Sean O'Connor, while the offense was on the bench, began to complain of headaches. Remember that hit he took just a while ago that gave him the bloody nose and left him stunned for a little bit. Came to the sideline, started to complain of headaches, and trainer Tim Neal tells me he is done for the day. They've taken him, taken him to the locker room, check on his condition, and he is out of this game. All right, one of their four senior offensive linemen out, junior Eric Calganides, is now at left guard. Tennessee rush gets to him, and it's Demetri Neal's first sack as a ball, just up from the Cerritos Junior College. Now let's check in. All right, Dave. 
Mac and the Big Ten because Mac be getting them again. Miami, Ohio, Ohio Michigan, Ben Michigan. Roethlisberger to the Academic All of America, Eddie Tillis, and it's 10-6 after the missed extra point. So much offense down from Michigan. Drew Henson, Anthony Thomas, David Terrell, all in the Richie, one score to another. They pocket four as noon. They have to roll. Green pass is caught. And the first time Diamond Ferry, Everett, Massachusetts, handles it. Dominique Stevenson ranges from the middle linebacker spot to the sideline to knock him out. I'll tell you what, they made something out of nothing there. They were going to go screen left for Will Overstreet, the right defensive end, read it for Tennessee, broke off of his left, took that away, forced Newton to come to his right. And they made a little bit out of out of what would have been absolutely nothing. Third long, though, another obvious passing situation. Third down and nine. No blitz, just the front four rushing. Noon steps up and underthrown, maybe. Graham Manley, the tight end with the dive. He might have been underthrown. He seems more upset that he didn't catch it. You've got to make that catch. Graham Manley, a senior tight end, has got to be the sure-handed guy in the middle that bails his quarterback out when he doesn't make an absolutely perfect throw. Syracuse is very much in this game, but they're going to have to stop shooting themselves in the foot to get something going offensively. Gaper set to kick it away to Eric Parker, with leading cup returner in Tennessee history. Number 24, it would have been a good one to fair catch, as it turned out. <laughs> as J.R. Johnson, special teams stalwart, hits it after 43 yards. Game, Mike Schaefer Parker. Parker. He'll be first. Tonight, 7.45 Eastern on ESPN. UCLA looking to improve upon last year. The Tuscaloosa, 1,000 yard back to Sean Foster, leads them in against Freddie Millen. And the Alabama Crimson Tide under new head coach Dennis Francione, hoping to revitalize them after their 3 and 8 disappointment a year ago. Coverage begins college game day, scoreboard 7 Eastern. Boston with the deep out a little bit high for Stallworth in front of the one handed catch. The first play on, Willie Ford knows what faces him. So I want to go back to the, the game Dave talked about. What's going through Dennis Francione's mind now? You, when you go into your first game as coach at Alabama, now Dennis doing the same thing, trying to turn that program around a little bit. Well, you just hope the guys will play hard. And the thing that Dennis is going to find out tonight is that they will, and that Freddie Millens is a talent. And I think it's going to go well for the Crimson Tide. I think it'll be a great game. Take the blitz. This is swung out, and uh, second time they find Kelly Washington. He's chased down by the free safety Quentin Harris. Washington, 21, a 37-inch leaper, sub 4-5 speed, terrific athlete. They've already figured out two ways to get it to him. And Quentin Harris has figured it out too. When he comes on the field, they're identifying him, and Quentin's been the leader back there in the secondary. Nice tackle inside out. No chance for Syracuse to force the three and out. On third and long, they need seven. Lawson will overthrow Stallworth. The other number four had it, Quentin Harris, and then lost it. But they will give him the possession for the interception. Oh, man, they faded him that time. They did. They faded him. They made it look like a zero coverage with no free safety. Quentin Harris dropped back there out of nowhere. Casey overthrew it a little bit, and the wrong number four came up with a beautiful veteran play by Harris. Well, I tell you what, uh, Casey Crossman was like a big old night crawler on a hook that time, wasn't he? Looks out, out to the top here. You see that's the coverage he sees. But here he is coming right over the top is Harris. He baited. He was even to the far side of the field, away from the middle. Clawson thought he had it all the way again. And Harris just took a beeline toward the play. Four-year starter, great experience. The call the general in the secondary. And the takeaway, giving it back to Syracuse. And they run the reverse for Maurice Jackson. Now 
Now you need us out front with a lead block, and Jackson will get 13 yards before battle knocks it out. Now, Mike, somebody had contained responsibility back there on the backside for Tennessee and forgot all about that. It's a, boy, that's a hard thing, Bill. When you're down there and you're crashing, you see the play going away, you want to get into that play, you want to get that backside hit and bust somebody that's not looking at you. All of a sudden, you're going, uh-oh, I'm supposed to be out there where that guy's running. Bad feeling. Into Tennessee territory, first and 10 to 47-yard line. And Mungro. It's a flag down from the secondary. Follows the pile for about four. Let's roll on the carry. Dominic Stevenson on the second And I think it favors Syracuse to this point is the difference in plays. I see Tennessee running a lot of the same plays over and over again, and they haven't had much success. And you're seeing Syracuse kind of mixing it up a little bit. Option, pass outside, pass inside, outside running game, inside running game. A little more diversity by Syracuse offense. Face mask on the defense. First Automatic down. first down. Five yarder, not a personal Five foul. Five yarder, not a personal foul. But uh, Mike George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator for Syracuse, is the definition of diverse play calling. He has so many series. He said last week we didn't get to run all our stuff because we didn't have enough plays. We only had 64 plays. He's got more than that. So from the 37. He just into your picture in motion. And the fake to Monroe. Noon's going deep for Jackson. Intercepted by Rashad Baker. Well, the Tennessee secondary said, if you can do it to our quarterback, we can do it to yours. He's going to say, Coach, I never saw him. Rashad Baker was laying in the weeds. In some states, there's a law against lurking and lying in wait. Here's Baker way over here. He just hangs in there. He's free. His man goes to the outside. That frees him up, and he's like a robber in the middle. A beautiful catch by Baker. Bill, this looks like Charles Woodson vintage Heisman. It does. Here. It's exactly like Woodson at Michigan State. Wow. So Tennessee from their nine. And Stevens. It's a couple of tackles. This leads to a lot of scrimmage. Now, Mike, there's some hitting going on with the big fellas up front. Boy, there, there really are, and, and there really is, I should say. And, and I want to see Tennessee mix it up. They try an inside run there. Probably going to pass here. I'm wondering what they're going to do. Is it going to be the same little hitch to Stallworth or to, or to, or to Washington, or are you going to try deep downfield? Need some diversity. Yeah, Christian Ferrara has sat in there, number 93. Mark Holston, 53. Lewis Gashlin, 99. Stout job in the middle of that along with that outstanding middle linebacker, Clifton Smith, number nine. Under three minutes, first quarter. Lots of room left side for Stevens in a foot race with Harris. And knocked out by Keon Walker. 39 yards. That's on Dwight Freeney, Mike. Absolutely right. Reggie Coleman, number 71, the left tackle, got the block on Dwight Freeney. Took him to the outside. Freeney will see playing the right defensive end position. Coleman will come out on him, gets his hands on him, gets a good hold of him. And I'll tell you what, you get your hands on the inside like that, Bill, the rest will never call it. Yeah, we had a piece of that shirt, too. Yes, he did. Stevens. Newly Webb married Tanisha June 2nd. We agree with him. First carry for Will Bartholomew, fullback, and let's send it down to Michelle. Well, you guys, Travis Stevens, so anxious to prove that he's durable this season, but offensive coordinator Randy Sanders isn't convinced. However, Phil Fulmer said he might give us more big plays than Travis Henry, just not as, ever, as many every down plays, and I'd say that was a big play. 39 yards, that right. counts as a very big play. That's going to count. We, we chalked that up in the big play column. That's farther than you ran Golick in your career. I'll tell you what, I need a lot of oxygen after running like that, or food, one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what to do first. Three yard pick up by Follamu. And he gets it again. Gets another two or three. Let's check in on Cal, Illinois. Reese Davis. 
All right, Dave, Illinois and Cal, and you know Illinois, they've got Brandon Lloyd back on the outside. They've got their tailbacks back, including Antonio Harris. He has scored three touchdowns today in the line. I laying it on the Bears, 24-0. Oh, you're sturdy, Golden Bears, Michelle. Michelle, though, I hope Michelle didn't hear that. Michelle, I heard did, it. did you hear that? I, I heard it, and uh, I, I knew you'd comment. The are taking it on the chin, Michelle. Third down. And Clawson meets Dwight Greeny, maybe not for the last time. Greeny with three sacks in just a game and a quarter in his senior season. What? Syracuse does so well is, is get Freeney the matchup he wants. Last week, two sacks on a fullback and a linebacker. This time, it's the fullback Bartholomew with Freeney one-on-one. Are you kidding me? That, that is such a mismatch. You can't even believe, and that's what Freeney has to be licking his chops when he sees that. Well, this is a guy that got to Michael Vick. Uncatchable Michael Vick four and a half times in the Virginia Tech game last year. Colquitt an impressive 50-yard punt, but not what he had in mind because it sailed too far and he nets only 30. But that's what, that's what Syracuse does so well in the rush, is they'll get it so he's matched up on a tight end or a running back. His two sacks last week, like I said, were against a tight end and a running back. He can beat the lineman as well. He does a good job of that, but Syracuse schemes their defense so well to get him that mismatch. Chris Rippon, defensive coordinator, spends hours and hours specifically to create that mismatch. Ten consecutive games now with at least one sack for Freeman. Well, he ended that Tennessee possession. Now Syracuse taking it over. Final seconds of the first quarter. Nunes gave it to Mungro. Nobody followed Nunes. They knew where the ball was. And they give him no gain. First contact, John Henderson. If you want to see how to win the Outland Trophy, this is how you do it. If you want to see how to play defensive football, watch this guy right here. Pads down. Feet up under him, boom, stuff the blocker, slip off, nail the back right between the numbers. That's the way to play football. 6-7, is that a disadvantage? Well, you know, it, it, it can be, but uh, he knows how to play, keep his pads down. He knows how to play with leverage and quickness, so he doesn't play at 6-7. If he did, there'd be people eating him in the chest all day long. Syracuse coaches think that that size makes him better than the people they've seen. And that was all the points we saw in the opening 15 minutes. Second and 10 to start this quarter. The Orangemen from their 20. thought of turning the corner. Demetrin Veal, the junior college transfer, already with a couple of stops behind the line. And our game track through one quarter. Here's that loud beginning to the 2001 season. A critical mistake by Syracuse to pitch off the fullback's back. Mungro tries to recover, but Tennessee comes up with it. And an incredibly athletic play by Rashad Baker for the interception for Tennessee. Now the third and long, they need 12. And Nunes running for his life all the way back at the five-yard line. Jabari Greer coming from the corner. Got him a loss of 12 yards. Well, that's bringing the house. Dominique Stevenson came first. Greer came in second. They had a little, what they call, a meeting at the quarterback. You bring more than they have to block. Up the gut with Stevenson. Greer comes. Nice job of sidestepping the block, Stevenson. Far back as you can get the putter. Schaefer gets a pretty good one. And Parker wrestled down line, a 41-yard kick, and the tackle made by Willie Ford. What a wonderful job by J.R. Johnson, number 45. He just took the blocker and threw him into the 
ball carrier, the returner, and then participated in the tackle. That's the way to cover a kick. JR didn't get to play last week because his coach left him home to handle academics. That will get your attention and that will help you to cover a punt a little more vigorously. And he's so important to their special teams that yes. if they have to rest him, they rest him at linebacker. Yes. They want him fresh <laughs> for those type of I see why. Ball start at the Syracuse 44. Travis Stevens broke a 39-yarder in the first quarter and has 11 before he's dragged down from behind by Quentin Harris. And Stevens clearly relishing the opportunity and the fact that there's nobody to beat back now for the starting tailback job. Nice job by Bar Bartholomew, the fullback, leading out on the linebacker, looking straight up the middle here. Going to come on and take out the linebacker, create the hole. And there goes Steven, just breaks it to the outside, got some open space. Not a bad start, four carries, 58 yards for Steven. He'll try him again. And maybe two this time. There's some questions about his durability, 5'9", 190, not the biggest they've had back there. But not about the attitude or willingness, anything along those lines. He just got two yards there, so at 60 yards, he now has more yards rushing himself than the Syracuse team, than the whole Syracuse team did last week. High formation after a gain of two. And again, they try to get it to Stallworth one-on-one -on -one with Willie Ford. It worked the first play, and really not since then. Now, Willie Ford's doing a better job. Yeah. The biggest biggest factor is that Boston has not thrown another good deep ball since the first one. He's been, he's been too long, and he's been too far inside that helped cause the interception, and Ford has done a better job of coverage. They're going to pick on Ford, though. He got burned last week, and he got burned badly last year. Syracuse defense has settled down nice, though. They have kept Tennessee from picking up any third down conversions. And put him in a third and long here. Three wideouts on the left side. Brady has him again. Now that <laughs> is inexplicable. <laughs> that they did not have a blocker on Dwight Freeney. If Dwight Freeney's on the field, I got two guys to block you all the time, Dwight. You let him run. The guy that tackles Michael Vick, you think he's going to miss Casey twice in a row? Casey eluded him one time, not this time. A serious protection mistake by the Tennessee offense, and it's on the quarterback. He's got to make a call to get a slide in that direction. You can see from the action of Randy Sanders, he didn't get his correct call. Well, Colquitt calling timeout. Tennessee down to eight seconds on the play clock. They don't have an up back again. He ran in late last time, and I think it's a... He ran in late and, and didn't come out this time, so they're only 10 on the field. 11.50 uh, to go. Second quarter, Colquitt will kick it when we come back to Knoxville. The eighth winningest program in college football history. Ranked eighth in the country beginning this season. Now Travis Stevens on as the up man in front of Colquitt. First couple of punts have all been too long, and this one may be as well. The lip of the goal line, they down it. I mean, a foot away, they get it this time. Great job by Stephen Marsh, number nine. That's hard. Special teams emphasis works on this every day. The rule says if the ball does not break the plane of the goal line, then it stays out. And he wisely tossed it back out before his momentum carried him in. He doesn't have to have possession, although he does. <laughs> Nice play. That is a fantastic play. And even if the score is on the line, yeah. as long as the ball doesn't cross, his body, goal line, his body can be in the end zone if the ball doesn't cross. This normally means three points for the kicking team. 107,000 in your ear, and you're on your one first down, full house backfield. That's what faces Noons, and he sneaks it out to the two. 
Bill, what, what do you honestly expect out of your offense with that kind of noise around at Matt Enzo? The rule of the, the, the thumb of good football teams is, men, you've got to make a first down in a situation like this. Don't let them force us to punt from the back line of the end zone. Make one first down at least so we can kick the ball out and make them start on very end of the field. Otherwise, you almost guarantee three points at least for the kicking team. They're going to line up in the full house wishbone. First man through gets it. And the Johnson out near the five. Let's check in again. Oklahoma and Air Force, Reese Davis. And Dave, Nate Hibble had just completed a third and 13 pass to keep a drive alive. And maybe we're starting to see the growth of a quarterback. Hibble standing in and firing to Andre Wolfold, who picked up 54. On the next play, he hit Trent Smith for a touchdown. It's 17 3 soon. 20 out of 29, but not much yardage in his debut against uh, North Carolina last week. Third and six. And they go three wides. They got to get it to the 11 to avoid punting out of their own end zone. Short turn in. And got enough for a first down. A nicely run pattern and uh, the catch is made for Syracuse on a perfect strike by Jamel Riddle. And Bill, just how you said the offense's job is to get at least one first down. Conversely, the defense, it's don't let them get that first down. Make them punt from in there. But Syracuse, a nice job. You need five or six, you get six or seven. You get one yard past the change. Don't get fancy. Just move the change for that first first down. And Riddle stays in, goes wide right. Fauzi Leverett, another backup receiver, went in motion. And across the 15-yard line goes Ferry. One of only two freshmen good enough to play last year. Remember, a couple of state championship teams in Everett, Massachusetts. And a marker down at the line of scrimmage. And how they want to do it with Ferry and with Mungro's, let Mungro go you see the penalty against Syracuse. Let Mungro go four series, Ferry come in for two. That's kind of how they want to split it up. Didn't work that well, they said last week, with the way they, they couldn't move the ball. But that's the normal the normal transition they like to have between those two backs. Well, they only had 10 series last week. Yeah. And you usually expect at least 12 or 13. Right. You'd like to get 14 if you're the offensive team. Man, down here in your own territory, this is so frustrating. You can see it on Coach Pastelloni's face. A well-coached football team simply does not make this many mistakes, even in its first and second game. Yes. Somehow they got to get their guys' attention. Two turnovers, an interception, and a bad pitch charged to him as a fumble. Both in the first quarter. Now here comes another penalty marker. <laughs> Well, they had plenty of time on the play clock. Somebody may have got set and got out of their stance, or it's going to probably be an illegal shift. The ball, fourth stop, offense. Half the distance to the line, still first down. This is absolutely incredible. And now, <laughs> this is a Big East crew, so nobody can accuse anybody of anything around here <laughs> playing games with the rules, but Syracuse continu continues to simply shoot themselves in the foot. This is I've never seen a Syracuse team self-destruct like this. They're right back at the three-yard line, Mike. Fifth penalty to go with the pair of turnovers. They had given themselves some room. Now they're about where this drive started at their own one. And Noon kept it. It is a safety. Busted play. Constantine Ritzman, a foreign exchange student from Melancy, Germany. Played one year of high school ball in Tallahassee. And now backing up Will Overstreet at defensive end. And Richman has Noons for the safety. 9-0 Tennessee. 
This is a miscommunication between the quarterback and the fullback. The quarterback expects him to take it, and he's suddenly left helpless. Richmond runs him down in a heartbeat. Here's a question for you. They used backups that entire possession, backup receivers, backups behind noons. At that spot on the field, what do you think of that? I mean, don't you want first-teamers from your own one-yard line? These guys practice all the time, and you tell them they're going to play, and they're going to go in on the third or fourth series or whatever it is. You put them in the game no matter where it is. That's a traditional pro Program's approach, and that's what Coach P's trying to do. You have a, a sixth-year senior fullback, Kyle Johnson, out, and Chris Davis, a former tailback, never really played much fullback, is the guy that didn't take it from noon that time. I tell you what's amazing me is all the, the mistakes Syracuse is making with a game under their belt. You expect that in the first game of the season, which is for Tennessee. These kind of mistakes, the Ill illegal procedures, the miscommunication of the plays, seeing that between week one and two, as Michelle said earlier, that's when the coaches felt you should have a lot of progress. Syracuse really, really reeling right now. I point out, Dave, that, that was a backup Tennessee player that made that play, and he did his job. <laughs> Ran in there, nobody down touched there on him. The <laughs> <laughs> One year high school ball. Oh, yeah. Where's he from again? Melanesee, Germany. Thank you. Is that close to Tallahassee? It's close to Plovdiv, Bulgaria, who produced our <laughs> kicker <laughs> from last Which week. Which is close to Denmark, according to Golan. Oh, come on. I didn't you said it. You said it. You try to take it. I didn't do well in meteorology. I mean, junk, whatever. What's that called? Well, no wonder. You went to the wrong class. Oh, I got it. Schaefer's kick. Returned by the speedster Leonard Scott. Crack All-America return to the 42-yard line. And Michigan and Miami of Ohio underway. Reese Davis. And that revamped Wolverine offense in the second quarter, about two minutes left, only Navarre 10 points the on the board, Number but John Navarro will slip it out there to B.J. Askew. Askew will be stopped short of the goal line. It took Michigan four plays to get in from there, but get in they did, and they're up 17-6. All right, and Leonard Scott shaken up after his return. And they check on him, the junior from Zachary, Louisiana. They feel their fastest receiver since Willie Galt in the early 80s. Seven time All America in both indoor and outdoor track. And helped Tennessee win the NCAA outdoor championship last spring. Average about 24 yards in return last year in kickoffs. Get him in the open field for so long. So from the 42, play fake. Lawson throws a completion, but for negative yardage to Kelly Washington. Good A for originality, F for execution. Coleman, uh, Reggie Coleman, I should say, was out there and didn't make the block. Let the defender come in. They, they had it. They had Freeney coming in for that quick penetration, trying to take advantage of it. No block. Freeney bearing down on Foss at that time with the uh, pass from before he could do any damage. Still a loss of one. The stop by Lewis Gashlin. Lawson is going to step up and keep it, and he's back at the original line of Christian Ferrara has it this time. Now, that does not look like a good play at all, but to train a quarterback, if you set up and there's nothing there, the best thing you can do is to pull that ball down and run straight ahead. You might pop out of there and run for a first down, but you're not going to come up third and 18. So they got a shot at third and nine plus. Leonard Scott, by the way, okay. You know, the win knocked out of Midway point of the second quarter. And again, the quick toss. Stevens, couple of blockers out front. Nice cutback. And then coughs it up, and it's loose at the 25-yard line. Balls had a chance to get it first. Washington, it looked like, trying to run with it, and Syracuse gets the recovery. Number 80, Eric Parker, will be met by the coaching staff, beginning with the head coach. He didn't fumble the ball, but he had a chance to get on it, and instead, there it is, he tried to pick it up and become a hero. What you do is you curl in a fetal position around this bounding football. You do not try to pick it up. You just get on it. Eric's been trained that way, and he just forgot himself here. 
booted the ball and ended up giving it back to Syracuse. Yeah. A comedy of errors by both teams here. And the cause by Harris, it was Parker. He could have fallen on it and didn't. Munro into the secondary and got it out of bounds by Julian Battle and a late flag over there. Another 15 on to that. Bill, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to disagree a little bit. I, I think there's a time and a place to try and pick the ball up and make some. I know coaches don't agree with that. They say fall on the ball. I think there's a time and a place to try and pick it up. Right there, though, that was not the time or the place. That was a long run, a great game, fall on and keep possession. <laughs> I never said there was never a time. Uh, you would, hey, you would hate time. if somebody picked it up. I'm going you. to disagree a little bit. First one foul. Get the defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. That's not the best call I ever saw. I think that that was, uh, I don't think that that was intentional. I don't think he shoved him very hard. It was called on Julian Battle, and it was not a very good call. And move it up to midfield. Both teams now turning it over twice. Last possession started at their own one. They're breathing in this time for the Orange Men. And Munro starting to go back there. Barry on that last Tackle possession. By White side. And stopped by the weak side linebacker, Keon Whiteside, joined by the man on the strong side, Eddie Moore. And number 92 is in the football game for Tennessee now. Albert Hainsworth, Philip Fulmer, and his defensive staff said this guy may have more talent than John Henderson, but he's been nicked up with a knee. We're happy he's going to get some action today. Out of the shotgun. On second and seven, another fumble. And Mungro appeared to get this one back. Bill, how much are you pulling your hair out on the side? I know it's a coach seeing these mistakes. Oh. To answer your question, Mike, I have pulled it all out by now. <laughs> really, both teams, but Syracuse particularly. These are basic things. You practice these the first day of spring practice, and you practice them every day until you play. And then you play your first game, and then you're supposed to improve before the second game. Not good. Lucky they get that one back. Hainsworth back on the sideline now on third and seven. News about to run out of time on the play clock after changing the call. And about to run out of room now. Along the sideline, pulls up and overthrown. Intended for Johnny Moran on the sideline. But Johnny Moran is a six foot four wide receiver. He's got to catch that ball. The little fine details of preparing your mind to play football were not done by the Syracuse team for this game, especially the offense. Well, they can do nothing with the great field position after the uh, penalty on Julian Battle. Fourth punt of the day for Schaefer. Replaced, as we said, as the placement kicker this week, but they haven't been close enough to uh, get Justin Sujanski, the new kicker, a crack at anything. A very short Tennessee return this time by Rashad Baker on just a 33-yard, very short punt. Five and a half minutes in the first half. Five and a half minutes in the first half, still 9-0 Tennessee. And they take over at their 17-yard line. Casey Clawson, 6 of 11, 98 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Last possession ended on the Travis Stevens fumble. We'll be right back to him to start this drive. And he picks his way through the middle and gains about six yards. You know, to the point, Bill, where it's good play, good play, then you wonder what's going to blow up or what's going to go wrong for both teams. That's right. Point. There goes Bartholomew with a bad ankle. He, it was heavily taped Thursday at practice, and uh, the coaching staff was concerned about whether he could uh, last the game, and he's gone out, at least for now. Ankles are funny things. If he rested a while and they ice it, he may be able to come back. Bartholomew, one of their captains, three-time academic All-SEC, already with his degree in finance. Jason Witten back on tight end went in motion. Stevens again right through the middle. Going to be close for first down, but a marker is down. Usually in that area, it's holding. That's exactly what it is. Oh, you love to say that, don't you? Well, 
you know, when those D linemen, they're going to make the plays. Those offense got to grab the, the, the cheat, Bill. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> Not that. You've had, right. you've had over a year now to try and talk him out of that mindset, and uh, here's the call. Hasn't worked yet. Holy. Get the offense. 10 yard penalty. In the spot of the foul. Repeat. Second down. But, Mike, what I heard was that they never had to hold you. No, it's, they pretty much, you remember when Freeney came free that one time? They pretty much let me do that all I wanted. <laughs> Figuring I was still out of the ball. Oh, I know better than that. I know better. Now, Tennessee up to almost Syracuse penalty up. Off second and 12. Play fake swing pass. Eric Parker and fans wanted a face mask on Jamel Dumas, and they may just get it. The flag is thrown right where the tackle is made. And, and if it is, I don't know about this one. Looked like he had him on the top of the head, but didn't actually have. But no, it's a clip. Blocked all the way, so. <laughs> they thought they would like that call. Boy, oh boy. The defenders on both teams are making nice plays yes, on the screens, are. but I'll tell you this. Whoever's working with the lead blockers, in some cases it's the receivers, in other cases it's the offensive linemen, the screen blockers have not been coached well in technique. They are not getting their bodies laid out. They're not driving into people. They're hesitant, and the defenders are just running by them, making plays. Flipping. And they take the third and long down to Michelle Tafoya. Well, Will Bartholomew, you're right, heavily taped, Bill Curry, underneath an ankle brace, a pre-existing condition. They're not sure if he's going to come back. He's questionable right now. They're going to let him sit, maybe put some ice on it at halftime and see what happens. I'll keep you posted. Michelle, you sound like an HMO agent. <laughs> he has a pre-existing condition. Are you getting his identification number down there and everything? for the Social for Security the and student ID. <laughs> that means he's not covered, I think. <laughs> Third and 12. Dawson pulled down just as he delivers that one, and as a result, way underthrown for Parker, covered by four. You don't even have to mention who it was. Yeah, you yeah. don't even have to look for the number. The guy is uncanny. He is just a pass rusher. Dwight Freeney is a great pass rusher. I, honest to goodness, he reminds me of Derek Thomas, who played for us at Alabama. God rest his soul. The greatest football player I ever coached could do this kind of thing all day, and so can Dwight. On a back again, Bill. He's on a running back. It's well, that's, unbelievable that's how they're getting, those, they're getting those matchups. Colquitt has took the deep this entire first half. The Syracuse return by Jamel Riddle. We'll give them a start in volunteer territory. A tackle by Mark Jones. Freedy has advertised a handful. Volunteer symbol on campus here, not too far from Neyland Stadium. Knoxville, Tennessee, 9 0. The Volunteers, 3.44 to go in the second quarter. The Orangemen with their eighth drive. Six of the first seven have gone four plays or less. Unable to sustain a thing. This time, a great field position. They start with a gain by Munro over left tackle. Ended by Rashad Moore's tackle. Mark rolling under three and a half minutes. And usually, Will Overstreet also will be somewhere into the picture. Bill, Syracuse known for the diversified offense with nine seniors out there to run it. They ought to be well enough versed that these mistakes should not be happening. They've right? made it work before for years and years, and you'd think this unit could execute it. Seven points in the opener. Shutout so far here in game two. Noons going deep for Morant. And there's a little contact with Teddy Gaines as that ball was coming down, but no flag and incomplete. And it will be third and six. Well, this has kind of been the story for Syracuse. The defense makes a nice stop, and then the offense fails to do anything with it. They're in their long situation. This is how it was against Georgia Tech last week. The defense kept giving Syracuse a chance, and the offense couldn't take advantage of it. Here, they're in nice field position. One or two first downs. They can at least get a field goal attempt out of this.
Maurice Jackson went in motion. Nunes has to step up. Needs to get to the 38. And he's going to come up short. But you know, he didn't have to step up, Dave. He had nice protection. This is a field thing for a quarterback. And Nunes is just a little bit rattled here, I think, by the mistakes that have been made. Yes, he's tough, and yes, he's good and smart, but he hasn't got any orange shirt near him here. He bolts. He could have sat right in there and taken his time until somebody came open. And the big guy, Morant's got to start making some catches. Two good passes have hit his hands. He's a 6'4 guy, 220 pounds. They're counting on him to come through and be, become a veteran receiver. Again, fourth and short. No doubt but to go for it at the 39-yard line of Tennessee. All defenders use the opportunity to get the 107,000 up on their feet. Quick count, Noons wanted to go to the air, hit as he delivers, and through the hands of Graham Manley. He's had two just like that here in the first half. Every single coach on the sideline for Syracuse was yelling in, call timeout, call timeout. They didn't like something they saw. Noons never saw it. Nobody on the offense saw it, and they went with the play. And he had it right there. Injured Orangeman at the 45. Unable to pick up a number yet. Big Graham Manley is kind of a knuckleball, but it's right there. Oh. And the thing hits him in the face mask. I mean, that is just lack of concentration. It wasn't touched. It really wasn't shielded from him, Mike. It was coming in from up high. He's a big, tall yep. guy. You put your hands up and you catch the football if you're the tight end. And let's go quickly to Reese Davis. All right, Dave, coming up at the half, we'll check in on Virginia Tech's new quarterback who almost did something Michael Vick never did in his days in Blacksburg, the debut of two new coaches in the SEC. We'll check on that. And the Terps open up the fridge, and they like what's inside. We'll see you in a few minutes. All right, it's Diamond Ferry. Just now, if we get up to his feet. Boy, and, and, Bill, you're right. I mean, for, for as much as the coaches wanted to time out, they caught a break, and... Manley was wide, was right there. Got to make that catch. Got to make that play. Tennessee is very fortunate that they're not well behind right now because Syracuse has continued to kill themselves. 2.08 to go, and timeouts left. Plenty of time to add to this lead. Not a bad start here. Stevens. Knocked out at the 20 by Harris. He had a 39-yarder in the first quarter. This one goes 38. And Bill, all these plays start up front with your old position. Jason Rethbert, the center, has the block. Right here, watch him kick out on the defender. He's going to push him out. Opens up the middle of the field. Good wall off by the center and guard, giving the running back room. Most important player on the field. <laughs> and Stevens already over 100 yards. Eight carries, 105. The senior from Clarksville, Tennessee. Set up another screen, and it is blown up by Clifton Smith, a very active athletic middle linebacker. Now, let me quickly add that the center also has responsibility to look up that middle linebacker. The center, Scott Wells, 64, is out in this screen. you got to find Clifton Smith. He's the best football player on the defense. He's in man coverage. He's going to sit on your screen. You have to get a block on him on that little quick screen. Not to him for a loss. And brings up second and 11. 122 and counting in the half. This one complete. And uh, Bobby Graham hit immediately by Quentin Harris. Tackle by Harris. Clock continues to roll, and Tennessee will have time to huddle on a third and four. Let's see where Mr. Freeney lines up. He's going to be right defensive end opposite Reggie Coleman. Now timeout call. I call it a good 15 20 20 seconds after they could have. Sure That's a mistake. That's yeah. a coaching error to let the clock run that far. 
54 seconds. Tennessee looking to add to a 9-0 lead when we come back to Knoxville. So one now. All the timeouts left for Tennessee. They get this one 54 seconds to go. Third and five at the Syracuse. 18 and a sack and a flag. Nothing goes right for Clawson here. He has Josh Thomas on him. A flag down upon the snap. We've been bragging on Dwight Freeney so much. Josh Thomas has been a force in this game. Tipping balls, making nice plays on the run. You believe this? Off Offside oh. Syracuse. No, I can't believe it. Well, I'd say there's more, more laundry out there. The rest are going to have to wash them at halftime. Six penalties. Or most of them have that same reaction. Paul Pasqualoni just throwing up his hands in disbelief. And the way that one came out, somebody had to be lined up in the neutral zone yep. before the play even started. Inside, defense, repeat, go down. I'll tell you, these are equal opportunity officials. Both groups are just killing themselves with absolutely inane type of penalties. Uh, and the ref just said repeat third down, but I believe they're going to get a first down once they get they five are. yards. Here they are. So it's now first, first and ten at about the 12-yard line, 48 seconds and one timeout. And so the officials are joining the group of the mistake makers, and that's a bad mistake. That's sacked may very well take Tennessee out of field goal position. If they kick it, it's not going to be a sure thing for three at all. That may be a seven-point penalty. Yep. There's the 48 seconds to go. They're given first down at the 12. Watch for Freeney this time lined up at left end. Give it out of the gun to Stevens inside the 10. And a nice idea, knowing that Freeney favors the upfield rush, they run the draw right at him. Clark down to 20 seconds. Lawson swing pass caught by Jason Witten. And he gets it stopped with 16 seconds, driven out by Charles Burke. Well, I don't know about the time management, Bill. There were 40 some seconds. Now we're down to 16. One time out to go, and they've only made about six yards from their first down at the 12. Now it's third. Time management looks like first game time management. Jason Witten, Tennessee is counting on to be a force out there, blocking as an H-back and catching the ball. He's a former wide receiver, weighs 265. Barry Davis had been in, now replaced again by Stevens. Only man in the backfield. Third and five. They can get a first down at the two. They'd rather have seven right here. Clawson's toss is batted down by Keon Walker. Wow. <laughs> Very fortunate that that wasn't plucked by Keon and taken the other way. Get your three and get out. <laughs> Let me tell you what. I think everybody needs halftime. Folks, here is some ugly football. A continuation. There's no other way to say it. We can't candy coat it. Casey knows better than to lock this ball up. Just a nice, gentle throw to the strong safety, Keon Walker. <laughs> uh, not a good selection there, Casey. You're smarter than that. You did a better job than that last year as a true freshman. So Alex Walls on the track, 25-yarder. Led the SEC 93 points last year as a sophomore, second-team All-America, finalist for the Groza Award, and a record 90%. This one gets them off to a good start in 2001. And that penalty is a four-point penalty, I guess we call it, because they did not get a touchdown, but they probably would have had Tennessee out of field goal range had the uh, sack stood. Bill, what do you do, again, with the coach's hat on? What are you doing at halftime? I mean, there's almost... So many mistakes, you can't cover them all. So where do you focus for both of these teams to get them ready for the second half? Well, there's not a pat answer. It depends on what kind of team you got. If you got a bunch of veterans that can take it, you let them have it. I mean, you, you, you have to light into them and say, man, you didn't come here mentally prepared today. We can teach you everything. That's exactly what Phillips telling him over there right now. We can't make you throw it to the right place when the guy's standing there with a white shirt in front of your receiver. That kind of thing. Now, if you've got a team that's a little fragile, 
maybe been knocked around a little bit, and you got to be careful. What you don't want to do is to kill their spirit at the half. Tomorrow at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, Heisman candidate Ken Simonson and the Oregon State Beavers go down the coast a bit, and uh, quarterback David Carr and the host Fresno State Bulldogs will take on Dennis Erickson's Beavers, ready for a run to the Rose Bowl. Fresno State showed what they were made of winning at Colorado last week. They are the WAC favorites, and that comes up tomorrow evening. Simonton's number is almost 1,500 yards, five and a half per carry last year for the Fiesta winners. Do they play, Mike? Uh, ND at North Dakota. <laughs> that was dirty. <laughs> that, that's mean to North Dakota. You're right. They, they whooped up on Notre Dame. I'll take my medicine. Return, Maurice Jackson is out of bounds as the first half comes to a close. A lot like last week, mistakes. Too many of them, the story for Syracuse. Not out of this thing, though. Tennessee's made their share as well, and they lead 12-0 in their season opener at Neyland Stadium. We send you back to the studio. Reese Davis. All right, Dave, and after the way Tennessee started with that touchdown on the first play from scrimmage, you thought maybe you'd see some fireworks from the Vols, but starting to take the complexion, as Dave said. Of Halftime just about over Neyland Stadium. Season opener for Tennessee. They lead 12-0 over the Syracuse Orangemen in their second game of the season. They lost 13-7 at the Meadowlands to Georgia Tech last week. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, Mike Golick. Syracuse, despite a lot of mistakes, still in this game. Not only are they in it, they could have the lead if they had executed at all. It's hard for me to believe they won't do better in the second half. Mistakes, mistakes, mistakes by both teams. That, that's the story of this half. Got off to a perfect start as far as the balls were concerned. If we check our game track, the very first play from scrimmage of the season goes 37 yards for a touchdown. Clawson into the end zone to Dante Stallworth. Syracuse, a comedy of errors. Unfortunately, six penalties for 49 yards. A nice play here by Rashad Baker from the Tennessee baiting the quarterback. Oh, and then the fumble by Stevens on a nice run. They don't want to fall on the ball. They give it up two turnovers for Tennessee to go along with four penalties for 40 yards. Six penalties, though, on Syracuse side for 49 yards. So a lot of flags being thrown this half. Yeah, and on all but one of the calls, it was hard to argue with. It. Let's send it down to Michelle Tafoya. All right, Dave, I spent half time in the Tennessee locker room, and offensive coordinator Randy Sanders addressed the entire offense, saying, we have had opportunities all over the place. We've miscommunicated on routes. We've missed receivers. You guys just need to slow down and play your game. How good do you want to be, he asked him. You've got to take ownership in this. Randy Sanders and Phil Fulmer, Phil Fulmer both spent a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with Casey Clawson trying to get him to calm down, telling him, you're stronger than this, you're better than this, you can play better than this. Again, take some ownership in it, Dave. Clawson in the first half had the decent numbers, 10 to 17, 107 yards, a touchdown and interception, but the point they were making, obviously, they thought it could have been much better. Schaefer starts the second half with a bobble kick. Leonard Scott, who had the win knocked out of him in the first half, returns it near the 20, and another special team tackle by J.R. Johnson. So J.R. again, he's got his schoolwork together and he's got his football together. <laughs> I just love this. A lot of times people say, well, it's a bobble ball. They usually pick it up and run for a touchdown. Not so. Not if J.R.'s on the field. He just mashes the blocker. Nice form tackle in the open field. That's Great special teams play. Senior out of Cicero, New York. From the 20. They start the third quarter with a give to Travis Stevens, who went over the 100-yard mark on a 38-yard dash late in the first half. His ninth carry here, and he's at 107. Who, who can get in the rhythm of their offense now? And you saw in the lead block for Tennessee was Will Bartholomew, the fullback. So he is back in the game. Must have, as Michelle said, was going to get some ice at halftime. Looks like it worked good enough. Ice the elixir, huh, Bill, to get you back on the field? Well, they found out the pre-existing condition was not so serious, but he couldn't continue. Motion by Jason Witten. Another give for Stevens, tripped up at 
at the line of scrimmage. Travis Stevens, Syracuse defense allowed a little over 200 total yards in the first half. Stevens, a much bigger worry, you would think, than the passing game, except for that first play, where they got the 37-yard touchdown. Yep, I'll tell you, Tennessee's body language does not make me feel confident for them. The way they came back on the field for the second half, they don't look like they're excited about correcting this situation. Lawson with three receivers on the right side, but out of the gun, he gives it again to Stevens, and he can't get away from Quentin Harris. Comes up after a quick read, helped out by Josh Thomas, and the Syracuse defense starts the second half with a three and out for Tennessee's offense. Bill, I absolutely agree with you. The key plays of the game, that first play of the game, you're always taught, go hit someone in the mouth, let them know right off the bat it's going to be a long day for you, and the first drive of the third series for really the offense and the defense. Syracuse clearly winning this battle. I agree. I don't, I don't like the way Tennessee is going off the bat. Good kick. This one knocked back after being touched around the 37-yard line. Well, tonight at 7:15 here on ESPN2. Right after we're done, Marshall, led by quarterback Byron Leftwich, thundering into Gainesville, and they take on the Florida Gators, ranked number one in the country beginning the season. Rex Grossman, Jabbar Gaffney, helping Florida become the early favorite for this year's national championship. And their road starts with the thundering herd. 7:15 tonight. Numbers last year for Grossman. Three times as many touchdowns as interceptions and better than 60%. Noons to Mungro on the pitch. Able to turn the corner and get the 44-yard line. Knocked out by Julian Battle. Bill, Syracuse has got the corner a few times on Tennessee, which surprises me. Tennessee usually known for that attacking defense as well as speed. But Syracuse really stretching them out. They're getting some good extension on the corner. They're running and they're turning it up. That's an eight-yard game. You don't expect that. Tennessee looks sluggish. They look sluggish on defense and on offense. Let's see if Syracuse can keep themselves stuck in here. David Tyree into the, the game at wide out, went in motion. There's a huge hole and a first down and up to midfield. Some of the best blocking of the day as they get the secondary for Mungro, the tackle made by the corner on that side, Teddy Gaines. Here's one of the places it'll get interesting, and Dave, you talked about it with Bill earlier, is the amount, the different types of plays and the amount of plays that Syracuse runs. They were just successful on two basic plays, a wide run and now an inside run. Now will they try to get a little fancy? Really nice job by P.J. Alexander, number 69, the left tackle. He creates that gaping hole. Mungro threw it for the first down. Mungro out for a break after hitting the 51-yard mark. Noons rolling on a play fake. That was intended for Maurice Jackson, way behind him. Now, Reese Davis, is Colorado still blowing out Colorado State up in Denver? They were indeed, Dave, 31 to 7. Colorado State changed quarterbacks after a couple of pick sixes by DJ Bush, Bradley Van Pelt, finding Henri Child there. It's a 31 14 game, but they're in the fourth. Gary Barnett did not have an enjoyable week. Oh. Next, next week may be different. Noons one of his last eight for eight yards through the air. Another toss around the left side, and Ferry will only pick up one this time. Will Overstreet. We talk about his motor and the fact that even with torn cartilage in his knee last year over his final eight games, he still couldn't keep him blocked. No, he's an academic all-SEC and just really a, a great person according to his coaches, a leader. Gets by on quickness and speed. Now the safeties are getting involved in the running game more and more. Watch the play-action pass in the next run-pass situation. Pump fake. And another inaccurate throw on third and nine intended for Campbell. <laughs> 
Campbell covered by Gaines, but what really hurt him in that possession was the ball thrown about five yards behind Maurice Jackson, who was wide open. Yeah, he, he tried another one of the pump fakes that didn't work. Again, the running has been working somewhat here, but then to go to the passing game, and now Noon's one of, one of his last nine not getting it done. And for the day, four of 12, 37 yards. All Syracuse has through the air. Papers pick. And not much of a return. Out to the 15 yards. A 15 yard mark on the, that punt in the third. Best way to beat the Knoxville game day traffic? Become a part of the Volunteer Navy. And sail right up to Nealon Stadium. Tennessee takes over at their 16 at 12 to nothing. 11 20 mark of the third quarter. Lawson all day threw it into double coverage. Very lucky that wasn't intercepted. Intended for Stallworth and Willie Ford after getting his hands on it. Slow getting up. Got a blow to the midsection of the fire. What? I tell you what, he's. Casey Foster seems to be playing with a little fire belt from the end of the, the uh, first half to now. He's had a couple that could have been picked on him. I can't remember when we've seen a well-thrown pass by either quarterback. That could be age, too, though. I'm sorry. I don't I, think so. They're not, they're, they're not that old. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a little weave off the left side by Corey Larkin, redshirt freshman, Opelika, Alabama. A converted defensive back with the crack and tailback. That middle linebacker for Syracuse has a traditional responsibility, and Clifton Smith is keeping up his end of the bargain. Another nice play by number nine, the middle linebacker. Scraping right in the hole, slipping the blocker, boom. The guy's trying to hold him and drag him down. That's Fred Weary, too, the best offensive lineman for Tennessee. So Tennessee face with the third and long. Get anything underway. Whistles. Marker on the play. Jack Kramer, the big East official. Fight and stop. Both starts. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still slowed down. I've seen our share of those today on both sides. Whatever happened at the half with the offensive units, the players do not have their minds in this game. They are not alert. They are not playing football like a, an outstanding SEC or an outstanding Big East team is supposed to play. The defenses are playing pretty well, but they don't have to play great football to stop these two offenses. Third and seven. Now turns into third and 12. Dawson couldn't get it off. He got smacked, and it is loose and picked up by Freeney. Dwight Freeney with the recovery inside the five-yard line. Will Hunter comes on a quarter blitz and separates Clawson from the ball. Another example of the quarterback having the responsibility to see secondary pressure, and he simply doesn't see it coming. Will Hunter, number 30, coming off the corner in the bottom of your screen. Here he comes. Freeney's almost there. Clawson never sees him, does not make the necessary adjustment, and down he goes, and the officials rule that the ball was not coming forward. Now let's see if the offense can get the job done from the five-yard line. <laughs> Freeney loves it. They might need to put him in there and throw him a pass. One touchdown the first six quarters plus for the Syracuse offense. This lines up in the eye oh, and right no. away. The first mistake of the third quarter, and it's a senior James Monroe. Ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Who backs him up to the 10? I asked him, I asked Troy Noons yesterday, are you ready for this noise? Do you have hand signals? Do you have ways to communicate so you won't make big mistakes when you got a chance on the goal line? He said, oh, yeah, we work in noise all the time. I, have, I am speechless at what we're seeing here from these two offenses. And the noise they heard all week, the song Rocky Top, the fight song for Tennessee was played all Tennessee. week from Syracuse to get them ready for the noise. <laughs> Nothing like the real thing, though. Quick give, and Mungro 
on the, the first down, back up to his 10, gets it inside the five. Now think about this. Suppose he had not moved on the first play. You know where he would have ended up? In the end zone on that play. Now they got second down at the four, and that is a whole lot different than a first and a touchdown on first down, needless to say. Bringing in the defense, giving them this great shot. And remember, for Pasqualoni, even field goals the last two years have not been sure things, even this close. So second down, the step just inside the five, quarterback draw, Nunes loses to the seven. <laughs> Rashad Moore. I'm speechless. I, I don't take it away, Mike. What, what what has been working for Syracuse the last series? A run around end, a couple of runs up the middle, a run right there works, and then they always try and get a little bit cute, a quarterback draw. Run what's working until they stop it. Third and goal. This possession has lost two yards on the first two snaps. Tyree back in motion. Nunes, one of his last nine, he hits Mungro, but knocked out of bounds inside the five by Dominique Stevenson. And uh, that effect is basically no movement allowed by the Tennessee defense or managed by the Syracuse offense, and they will send the kicking unit on and hoping for three. But lately, that's all Syracuse has been able to do, hope for three. Last 15 games, a pitiful 28%, and beyond 35 yards, again. And this is a program that's had great kickers through the years. This is a traditional kicking powerhouse. True freshman Justin Sujanski's first crack as a collegiate will be 22 yards. The big angle, right to left, and he sends it through. Took the job this week from the junior Mike Schaefer, who was 7 of 21 for his career, and he gets Syracuse on the board. Longtime Tennessee assistant John Chavis, defensive coordinator. Can't be anything but thrilled after uh, only allowing the field goal. That is a win for the Tennessee defense, I guarantee you that. Started at the five-yard line, ended at the five-yard line. They did, they've been getting beat a little bit at the point of attack. We said how Syracuse has been successful on the run up the gut or the run around end, the normal play. Then they start to, to fancy it up a bit, and then Tennessee's been hammering them there with their speed. First kick by far his deepest and it's a good seven yards deep where Dante Stallworth will take a knee we take it down to Michelle well Dave you know Bill Curry was just talking about this does not seem like a Tennessee team that you would expect even in the, the season opener in the locker room at halftime I completely agree with you Bill this was a team that was not very businesslike. They were relaxed. They were mostly concerned with getting hydrated. There wasn't the normal chanting and cheering that you hear in the Tennessee locker room at halftime. There wasn't a lot of intensity or a lot of fire. They almost seemed like, well, we're up 12 nothing. We don't really have a lot to worry about. Syracuse can't score, so we're not going to worry. And so far, they still don't look sharp, Bill. Well, I couldn't agree more. This is a big series for them offensively. First and 15. Left side. Offensive line moving to Tennessee. Yeah, and the captain, Weary, is right in Casey Clawson's face. So apparently it was a snap count error by the quarterback. At least Fred's going to make sure that everybody up here thinks so. Well, this is the leaders that have to step up. That's Weary. And when Michelle was talking, we had a shot of John Henderson on defense. These guys, the leaders, have to step up. Oh, yeah. That is not what he thought the count was on. He let the case him know. So, from the 15, first and 15, Stevens hit in the backfield by Jameel Dumas, the weak side backer. And again, confusion on the snap count. The ball was snapped early before people moved. There is very poor coordination for the Tennessee offense. Watch the coordination. Everybody should be moving in concert. The ball is snapped. There's a slight hesitation. The defense loves it because they get to jump on the offensive line. And if you're an offensive lineman, that's the worst thing that can happen to you. Second and 17. Cross 
Jackson looking deep right side and threw it way behind the wrong shoulder of Eric Parker. And he hears about it, too. Let's check in on Michigan, Miami of Ohio. Reese Davis. Dave, Miami was driving inside the Michigan 15, looking side. to pull closer. Ben Roethlisberger puts it up, and Jeremy Lasso with the pick, and Michigan answers by marching 80 yards. Reverse! Calvin Bell taking it into the house in Michigan. Pulled out there. How comfortably now, 24-6. to All right, nothing comfortable here. Tennessee's offense sputtering. And backing up this possession, 30-17, they've run it. And fans not in love with that part either. Well, what we have here is a very rattled young quarterback, and you just don't want to take a chance in that situation. The defense is stopping Syracuse when Syracuse doesn't stop itself, and so you just hand it off and punt the ball and play some defense. Now let's talk about field position here. Syracuse should be setting up for a return here. They should easily get the ball in Tennessee territory. I said the last drive was big for Tennessee. The same is true here for Syracuse. Mark right, Davis gets four. Cole Quick gets a pretty good rush right up the gut. And he unloads another nice punt. And nowhere to go on the return by Riddle. Riddle on the return. 47-yard kick by Cole Quick. 12-3 in the third. Yesterday, we halfway expected to hear Peyton Manning and T. Martin talk to us. <laughs> Lifelike wax likenesses of them. And 107,000 plus inside Neyland Stadium. Not real thrilled, even though their team on top 12 3. Seven points, first play from scrimmage. Not a whole lot from that point on from either offense. Head oh. snap over the head of Noon who wins the foot race, but he can't come up with the recovery. It's still loose inside the five-yard line. Should we expect anything but a mad scramble for the ball at this point? Tennessee oh. ball. John Henderson off the bottom of the pile. Nick Romeo. Bless his heart. The offensive center only gets his name called when this happens. Number 61, outstanding football player, a sophomore who's done a good job with a gun snap, and that's the risk you run when you run the shotgun formation. A snap like that can put you in dire straits, and I'm telling you, Syracuse is in deep trouble right now. First and goal, five-yard line. Tennessee Henderson hustles back and accepts the Syracuse gift. Good start on another Outland trophy for him. And Clawson wow. calls time. 6.46 in the third. Tennessee poised to take full control here. Clawson, after the timeout, back in the same formation with a couple tight ends, only one wide out. And the eye formation behind it. Jabari Davis in that backfield. Ahead of Stevens. And Travis is bringing up only game one for Travis. The Keon Walker, number 28, goes down an inside drill, or 9 on 7 every week. And he learns how to fill his gap. And there's a Tackler too many for this two tight end offense right here. They're, in theory, if everybody holds their gap, there should not be a place to run this defense against this offense. You should force either an option or a throw. That's, that's incredible. the theory of the defense. And that is incredible. That is that's incredible. a great number. Let's see if they can pull it off again. Forced to set it to three in the first half. Stallworth, the only wide out. Witten in motion. Toss sweep Stevens. Davis out in front. He cuts it back and in for the touchdown. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I didn't think he was getting in. He cut it back. There were four defenders there, and he sliced right through them. When Syracuse took over at the Tennessee 5, they settled for three, and Tennessee punches it in 
for six. After the bad snap by Nick Romeo sailed over Troy Noon's head. Alex Walls perfect on all his PATs last year and his streak up to 49 in a row. Well, they try and go wide. Nice night uh, for Stevens today for Stevens. They try and go wide in this play and they spring it out and he has a chance to cut it back. But look at the Syracuse defenders that are there. He cuts it back. They're going to show up. There's one. They're going to start coming in. One, two, three, four. And only Josh Thomas gets his hands on the guy and he slices through him. The defensive theory worked here. The execution did not. You've got to tackle and you don't tackle with a good back by putting your head behind him. Josh Thomas must tackle with his head across the bow or across the sternum of the running back. That did not happen there. And so uh, Phil Fulmer is a little happier with what he's seen here. If it's any consolation to Nick Romeo, he did not break your long-standing <laughs> record for the longest. I should have never told you Boy, that. Longest yeah. snap in Neyland Stadium 38 okay. years ago, okay. and it still stands. 1963, Georgia Tech versus Tennessee. I hiked the ball 35 yards into the end zone, but it was the other end zone, and I think that is probably still the record for Neyland Stadium, and I uh, should have never told these guys about that. Well, tell Nick about it now. He'll feel a little yeah, better. My coaches little better. told me about it. They said, you get one of those a career. <laughs> My wife burst into tears. Carolyn doesn't even cry at funerals. She cried. It was so bad. Bullfoot with a high kick. Down to Ferry. Flip. Oh, yeah. Arthur down Ferry returns to the 24. Ferry on the return. Long way to run 11 yards, all told. And the beat goes on. Rich Scanlon just shoved the guy in the back. That's just the dumbest, isn't it, Bill? I mean, you're taught. Yeah. On special teams, if you can see the back number of the player, don't touch him. And Scanlon, it was clearly in the back, and he just shoved him, and this cost an offense that is already struggling. Illegal block in the back on a kick return. They have to distance from the previous spot. First down. Rich Scanlon, number 57, shoves right here in the back. Just amazing oh. that you coach a guy that much. You can't imagine the number of reps these guys get but being taught not to do that. And then they get in a heated situation, and you start a drive at the eight-yard line. I don't know where they haven't been before today. Munro. Coming right, runs out of room after a nice gain on first down. Sunday night baseball presents one of the best rivalries in baseball history, the Boston Red Sox, hosting the New York Yankees. Sunday night baseball presented by Nextel at 8 Eastern. If you can't get to a TV, ESPN Radio will have the nationwide coverage. Check your local listings. Scheduled starters at the Fens, David Cohn and Mike Messina. Nice matchup tomorrow night. Yankees threatening to run away with the East. Another nice bit of blocking for Mungro. We check in on Duke and Florida State. Reese Davis. State, the nation's longest cruising streak belongs to the Blue Devils. Florida State retooling that defense. Seven new starters in there. Deep Bryant looking for Chris Douglas. Dangerous out of the backfield, and he will take it to the house. 79 yards, it's 6-0 Devils. Well, well, well. Duke ought to do the way Lee Corso did when his Indiana team was briefly ahead of Ohio State. Get everybody to pose in front of the scoreboard <laughs> for a picture. 6 to nothing. Let's commemorate this. Noon's couple of pumps. Nearest man to that was the Tennessee defensive back, Jazari Greer. Noon just going to get up slow. Amari Hand, he absolutely leveled Noons, who took some shots last week against Georgia Tech. Remember, this guy is just, what, about buck 85? And he's getting bounced off the turf a little bit. Noons going to come. Hand's going to come from the top of the screen, hit him, and he's going to land on him. And let me tell you what, when you get landed on, it hurts. 
She never got landed on. I tried to be the lander, not the landee. I say that right? Yeah. Well, yeah. feeding the play clock for a draw play. Can't get the pile more than a couple yards. It'll be third and eight. Once again, As Edward Kendrick and Robert Peace get to the first view, still trying to shake off that hit by hand. It may have bent his hand under it. The left hand. Well, he took such a beating, and it was Sunday. So as he said in our meeting yesterday, I didn't have a full week to recover, but I, I feel pretty good now. But it's amazing how much difference that 24 hours shorter period can make. So I mean, you get hit again, it almost doubles the pain. So here's third and seven. From the 23, Khan steps up and drops. He finally hit somebody between the numbers, and David Tyree couldn't catch it between the eight and the one. Uh, the, the only problem with that, it was third and seven. It was a two-yard crossing route. Even if he caught it, he wasn't making the first down. He wasn't throwing to the sticks. Well, you got football players that are not minding their fees and cues. Receivers are taught to catch the ball in their hands, suck it, and put it away. Don't catch it in your chest, regardless of whether it's two yards or eight yards. Bit of a high snap that time, but Schaefer handles it. More good Tennessee field position. Parker returns a 35-yard kick. 10 yards. Colorado and Colorado State again for Davis. Recent update. Dave, the Buffs two-game losing streak to the Rams is going to be over in a matter of moments. Chris Brown going in for the second time on the day. 41-14, just a buck and a half left to go in that game. All right, so Gary Barnett turns that rivalry back toward Boulder. And now one and one after the upset loss at home to Fresno State last week. Boy, did he need that win. Balls at the 48 of Syracuse. And again, Jabari Davis stays in at fullback. We've seen him at tailback a couple of times. This is Cedric Houston's first college carry. True freshman Clarendon, Arkansas, a parade All-America there after averaging 10 yards per carry as a senior. How in the world do you have 10 yards a carry? Jeez. You're either real good or the other teams are real bad. <laughs> or a mixture there. Probably thereof. both. Yeah. Probably both. State record, 97 touchdowns in his career. And they get Cedric a taste of college ball. Casey doesn't like what he sees. You they're going to burn another time out here. Fans really didn't like it the first time when it was on the Syracuse 5. Not real fond of it here. But, Mike, they had that alignment where number three, who happened to be uh, our speedster friend, yeah, LaTroy Oliver was lined up outside. So we'll, we'll go with Michelle. <laughs> yeah, Michelle's got some thoughts on Casey. <laughs> okay, talk to us, Michelle. I'm, I'm completely blowing this thing. Well, no, I think you're just flabbergasted by what you're seeing down here, and I think that Phil Fulmer probably is too. You know, we asked Phil Fulmer about Casey Claus, and he said his biggest asset is his confidence which can work against him once in a while, but it's usually a plus. He says he hasn't totally grasped the entire system, but twice he won ball games in two-minute drill situations last year as a freshman. And once he totally dedicates himself, you're probably looking at a first-round draft pick. Casey Clawson hasn't looked like that today, but perhaps it is a little bit of overconfidence, Coach. It's hard to believe after coming off the Cotton Bowl, this is one thing Philip talked about, is that the Cotton Bowl is, could be good for us because there's no way we could be overconfident. But from the offensive standpoint, there's a lot of work to be done. Well, only one more timeout, rest away for Tennessee. Now ready to go. On second and 10, 48 yard line to the morning. A lot of this in the early going, swinging it out to wideouts try to use their speed at the open field, but never much open out there for Dante Stallworth. Charles Burton hit it first. Well, they're really sticking to their bread and butter plays. Josh Thomas again, though, the six foot six defensive end for Syracuse, got his hand on the ball again. This time, they still get the completion, though. The bottom of the screen here, you see 97, watch him get his hands up, tips it again. Good concentration by the receiver hanging on. Big man getting his hands up. Nice job. Now 
third and seven. Watch Freeney from the stand-up spot. They double team him, keep him off Boston, and the throw over Parker. That's intended for Parker. Not one of the more impressive tosses of the day for Casey. Feeling that uh, over a quarter left to go, and certainly Syracuse two touchdowns and two extra uh, two two point conversions away from tying it. But if Tennessee can pull this one out, there won't be a lot of hooping and hollering after it. Well, <laughs> what you hope in a game like this is you find a way to win, try not to make any more mistakes, and then get on the practice field about 6 a.m. tomorrow morning <laughs> and stay there for a week. Malik Campbell waiting for this kick, and they come after Colquitt. He uh, does a little acting, does not draw the flag. And the 45-yard kick goes for a touchback. Oh, I'd say that's an Emmy Award winning performance. How about Oklahoma Air Force, Reese Davis? Dave Nate Hibble suddenly looks just like Dan Marino because he's throwing to Mark Clayton, redshirt freshman receiver, catching a touchdown pass, second touchdown pass of the day for Hibble. Quentin Griffin's over 200 yards rushing. The Sooners are booming. No, it's not Dan Marino's Mark Clayton, is it? He had some extra eligibility. Dan Marino left. Well, the theory of a good time to catch Oklahoma. Up in smoke. <laughs> Good effort on you early. It's not a good time, Dave. We see means all the way at quarterback, no R.J. Anderson. Starting to wonder if that might become a thought for the Syracuse coaching staff with the inability to move. Munro gets about four yards on this first down there. George DeLeon, offensive coordinator for Syracuse, is one of the outstanding football coaches in offensive football and has been for many, many years. Don McPherson did a great job. Marvin Graves, then, of course, the great Donovan McNabb. It's hard to understand how this could be happening to his offense. Virtually no passing game. 5 of 15, 39 yards in the second. Any time here, in a crowd, another drop by Tyree. Noons dropped again. Pass intended for Tyree. Right in Tyree's hands. That Reverend time he was right at the sticks. A good route right at the sticks. Found an open spot. Sat down. You saw him hit himself in the chest. He knows it's his fault. Got to make these plays. You're down this score. Got to make those plays. Watch him come back. Find the hole. It's a nice job of finding the hole there. He's right in the hand. Tyree, a big play receiver yep. last year. Deciding catches against West Virginia, Temple, Pittsburgh. The leading receiver last week, seven catches against Georgia Tech. And all R.J. Anderson's done today is stand and watch news struggle. Timeout call by Syracuse. Troy, two of his last ten through the air for ten yards. First Orangeman timeout. 51 to go. I mean, you can't really get less out of your quarterback spot. Unless well, I think I think we may need to go to our backup fullback wow. and, and hand it to him. I mean, he's going to need a face mask. Though. Looks like he's played without a face mask for a while there. <laughs> well, you know, Noons last week had the most attempts he's ever had at 32, so he's, he's had to put it up in the air some. He has not been successful doing that today. A little bit later on ESPN, 7.45 Eastern. UCLA Bruins, who began the year ranked 15th. Thousand-yard back, Deshaun Foster back. Number 25, Alabama, with Freddie Millens and new head coach, Dennis Francione. Off a 3-8 and disappointment a year ago. Coverage begins with College Game Day scoreboard at 7 Eastern. And Bill, you like the chances of Dennis Francione in Tuscaloosa. I think the Alabama family is going to back him. I think they're going to get beyond the thing of thinking that they have to have somebody from within the Bear, Bry Bear Bryant clan. And I think Francione is the guy. I really do. I think they'll do an outstanding job, and I think it'll start tonight. that for third down conversion. I mean, it's really unbelievable. Two outstanding offensive traditions here. Really struggling. Total of one converted on 21 chances between both offenses. Nooms with a shoe loop won't convert this one either. 
The man whose motor is never off, Will Overstreet, finally with the set. And he's, he's coming up holding his hand, coming off the field. Noons is hurt again. Overstreet got him on the backside and landed on him again. Again, Noons, not a very big quarterback at 185 pounds, dancing around back there, trying to find the open receiver. Overstreet stays after him. Ooh. And remember, the previous hit by Omari Hand on the last possession already had the Noons holding that left hand or left wrist. Well, they really have to check him closely now. Schaefer with the kick returned by Parker out of bounds at the 48. 45-yard punt by Schaefer. Parker just ran on out of bounds because he didn't want to get caught by R.J. again. <laughs> and R.J. getting loose over there. I will be shocked if R.J. Anderson isn't warming up now. I mean, Noons is taking a beating again. He's not accurate with his throws, though, to his, to his credit, he's had a few drops as well. But you have to wonder if a change is going to be made. Watch him land. He'll land right on him. The left arm's tucked under there. And let me tell you what, that's a, that, that's 260 pounds is overstreet. But when it's coming in the air and landing on you, it feels like a heck of a lot more than that. 19 of 32 last week, 5 of 16 this week. Blade fake and Clawson ready to go deep to Stolworth and defended this time by Will Hunter. Same play, first play from scrimmage, worked for a 37 yard Tennessee touchdown. That was against Willie Ford and the senior Will Hunter gets a hand on this one as Noons heads to the Syracuse locker room. This is the way you play man press coverage. You keep the receiver on your hip. Will Hunter, number 30, running stride for stride. And when the receiver's eyes go up, your hand goes up. There, nice. nice. Beautiful. Keep the receiver on your outside hip. Beautiful man coverage. Final minute of the quarter. And Clawson with Freedy down around his ankle somehow gets the pass off. And uh, Jabari Davis will lose three yards. Freedy won't get a sack, but he ought to. Yeah, you know what? I thought they were going to blow a dead on that one. He had control of him, but, you know, there's a pass completion for minus three yards, so I'm sure he'll take that as well. <laughs> that man is just everywhere on the field. Makes it very easy for our cameraman who to zoom in on. Look, you're in Tennessee now. You've got to learn to say that properly. That's everywhere. Everywhere? Yes, he is everywhere on the football field. Try that. He was everywhere on the football field, especially <laughs> on Casey's leg. Look at You're hopeless. You're from Ohio. He <laughs> <laughs> speaks too well now. Let's be good. <laughs> Maybe the last play of the quarter. This one intended for Parker. Over Parker and Willie Ford. You perfect, good coverage. Yeah, perfect man coverage. Now the corners are, are getting the feel for this thing. So when the fourth quarter begins, Tennessee will have to kick and we'll look for R.J. Anderson to be in charge of the Syracuse offense. Back in Neyland Stadium, Knoxville, Tennessee, for the start of the fourth quarter. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, Mike Golick, and Michelle DeFoy. It's 19-3, Tennessee. But neither offense did a thing in the third quarter, and the fourth begins appropriately with a punt by Dustin Colquitt, and it's fair caught at the 18-yard line by Jamel Riddle. 36-yarder, let's go down to Michelle Tafoya. Well, Dave, you saw Troy Noons walking into the locker room, kind of holding his left arm suspended. Nothing definitive yet, but uh, team trainer Tim Neal has told me he did injure his left wrist, Noons, and they are taking him in for precautionary x-rays. We'll keep you posted. All right, so the Plainville, Connecticut sophomore, R.J. Anderson, who started last year against West Virginia, Temple, Miami, and Rutgers, injured against the Mountaineers, and that knee he heard in that game, they said, really killed his progress in the eyes of the coaches for the rest of the 2000 season. He takes over a slumbering Syracuse offense and scrambles out of trouble. A key block at the 20, and out of all that, he'll gain about four yards. Could have been much worse. And the game track through three quarters. For the Tennessee quarterback, Casey Clawson, he started with a touchdown pass and has not done much since then. Sure looked pretty from the beginning. Syracuse, it has it. They were still in, in the game, still are. Nick Romeo with this bad snap over Noon's head for the, with our third turnover led to a Tennessee touchdown. Yeah, and the touchdown came on a nice run by Travis Stevens. Not very well blocked, but a lot of good running by number 34. 
In the third quarter, Syracuse minus six total yards. Tennessee only five total yards, and they did not make a first down. This will be close to the first down on the carry by Diamond Ferridge. Now, men, whatever we expected coming into this contest, whatever we said in the open, we didn't expect this. We didn't expect both these offenses to absolutely go into reverse for much of the day. Can never be an excuse, but is there at all, can you see it from the Tennessee side being the first game, Bill, or, or not even this bad, though? Well, maybe in the early going, maybe a couple of series, but at some point you begin to move the ball and to have some consistency. Less than one, maybe right at about a foot. Anderson about to run out of time on the play oh. clock, and he sees it just before it gets to zero. That's their second timeout. With 13.58 to go, come back for again third and a foot. The place you want to be when it rains, as it did about an hour or so before kickoff. Now on third and a foot, they go wide and they lose yardage again. Tad Golden got outside in a hurry from outside linebacker. Bill, I don't get that one, Bill. You've been running up the middle pretty good. You got less than a yard to go. I, I don't know. I, I, I just don't see that one. Go straight ahead. Get your half a yard. Move the chains and keep it going. Well, I couldn't agree more, especially with the way Tennessee was lined up. They were lined up in a straight 4-3 with a one technique and a three technique. You run toward the outside technique on the guard, and you make the first easy. Third and a foot. Turns into another punt by Schaefer. There's Parker. Maybe with a 44, but good field position. Parker, much on the return. All for Tennessee. Here in the second the half. Where's first and ten? If you're looking for bright spots for Syracuse, not many. And the one clear leader in that category has got to be Freeman. Oh, absolutely. Again, matchup situations there. A back trying to block him. He gets the sack. This one, nobody touches him. Gives Syracuse defense credit for setting up that situation like that. Here, the sack, the fumble. On the ball is Freeman. Two sacks and a fumble recovery. There is a bright spot, but unfortunately, I think they'd rather take the win. unable to generate a first down in the third quarter in this direction and the first completion to Jason Whitten today. And let's check in with Reese Davis. Duke and Florida State, you know, I say this often, you got to be sound in the kicking game and Duke is not. Trey McDonald can't handle the snap. That thing gets loose. Term grease pig comes to mind. Little help. Woo -woo 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 -woo. Other sound effects, Michael Boulware finally got it, William McRae scored, and then the freshman Jerome Carter blocks it, takes it himself, scores, Knowles up 17-6. This game kicking the six, not one count. Run on second and three, and with that late surge by Cedric Houston on his second collegiate carry, he picks up enough for the first. Well, you know it's getting interesting when you get that much applause for a first down. Well, they haven't seen it since the second quarter. I know. <laughs> Listen to this. They're really excited. <laughs> they moved the chain. They got into positive yardage for the half. And I'm not being cynical here. This is so unlike Tennessee to execute so poorly offensively. And the same could be said for Syracuse. Both defenses playing well. A year ago, the second highest scoring offense in the Southeastern Conference. 19 today. Now Corey Larkin. Travis Stevens backups. Getting some carries. Jameel Dumas carries. getting the tackle. Tackle by Dumas. Forcing the play. He's kind of an unsung player on that defense. 97. He doesn't get the tackle, but he certainly is making had a couple bad at balls. Some nice penetration. Today. Again, the defense, just like last week's Syracuse defense against Georgia Tech, played well, gave their offense some opportunities, and the offense hasn't come up with anything. Doing the same thing again today. Larkin, former Alabama 100 meters champion. Yet another Tennessee speedster. As the fake from crossing, and then the deep ball off the fingertips of Dante Stallworth. Stallworth back in coverage that time by Willie Ford, the man he beat on the first play touchdown. 
Now, if Clawson, I can tell you right now, if Randy Sanders, if Clawson were clicking, if he were confident, they'd be running these guys off and hitting them with some out cuts and some hitches, but I don't, they don't trust him to throw the short hitch passes, obviously, right now, so they're just sort of laying them out and swinging them deep. They'll hit one every now and then, but the corners know what's coming. It'd be easy to run them off and run some combination runs. Chased by Freeney. They missed him twice, but not the third time. A desperate lunge by Josh Thomas. Up high around the shoulder pad. Down Casey Clawson. I tell you what amazes me, and that's two times Clawson has sidestepped Freeney. This is a man who sacked Michael Vick four times last, last year. Michael Vick, the most elusive quarterback in the country. Look at Clawson steps again. There's Freeney coming up the middle. Comes in out of control. Clawson just sidesteps him. I'll tell you, uh, Josh Thomas is becoming yes, the unsung. He he's becoming the sung hero here. We're calling his name a lot. He's, that was a big play. Hey, 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 hey. Much better job this time avoiding the touchback. That one comes down. At the 15 of Elite Campbell. At the 15. And R.J. Anderson will have his second series at quarterback for the injured news. We come back. Troy Noons emerging from the Syracuse locker room. Michelle Tafoya working on official word, but uh, you pretty much get the picture there with a cast on the left wrist. He is out for a while. Anderson with a toss sweep for Munro. Knocked out a yard shy the first by Julian Babb. Those have been some of the things that have been working today for Syracuse. It's been it's been the basic plays, which is surprising for a Syracuse uh, for a, an offense as diverse as Syracuse. The basic sweep and basic plays up the middle. And the reason it worked: number 34, Chris Davis, the fullback, the lead blocker, right here in the middle of your screen, bides his time. Boom! Right there, nice job. A little better fall through could have been even better. And a first down here to the 27. Well, this guy Munro is the all-time leading rusher in the history of Pennsylvania high school football. So well, he wasn't exactly chopped liver coming out of high school, and he's done a nice job his whole career at Syracuse. Guys, at what point are we looking though that it's got to turn into a passing game here? Ten minutes to go. You're down by 16 points at some point, even though it's been working up the middle and around the outside in small chunks, they got to get it down the field. Now. I think they got to run the option, and then they got to throw the play action off the option, and they got to take some chances. I think you're right. Under 10 minutes. In the offset eye, play action. And Anderson with a pump fake had to get rid of it and couldn't. Will Overstreet given enough time to get to you, and Anderson gave him enough. Will Overstreet not affected by the play action. There's a blocker on him, number 81, Tyree, who's not having the best day of his career. Anderson has to pull the ball down, and then when you have to pull the ball down, a guy like Overstreet, who's always on the move, will locate you. You said it right there, always on the move. This is a defense that reads on the run, and that's exactly what Overstreet well, did. They had a wide receiver blocking on him, and I'm not sure that you'd ever want that if you're the QB. Sack and a loss of 12 yards. Play action again on second and 22, and lucky that one wasn't picked off. Jackson wants... An interference call on Teddy Gaines. Yeah, and I think <laughs> he might should have gotten one. You think so? We'll see. Let's, let's look together, shall we, Bill? And then we'll give our opinion. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't I didn't really see that. Uh, I might need to see it five, five more times. Down to Michelle for the word on Troy News. Well, it's what they call a chip fracture, not a true break, just a chip fracture. And after this play, Dave, I'll tell you how it happened. All right, third and 22 for his replacement, Anderson. Diamond Perry out of the backfield. Two wideouts left. That's where Anderson looks. Steps up, fires another one through the hands of a target. 
can't do much of that. And it's up for Johnny Morant. Uh, again, down to Michelle. Well, Dave, when Nunes was sacked, he was holding the ball in his left hand. He fell on it, and so his body fell down on the ball on his wrist. A little bit of the bone has chipped off. That's, again, called a chip fracture. He's obviously out for the game, but they're not ruling him out for any lengthy period of time beyond this. What would your guess be, though? It's just impossible to tell. Schaefer. Parker, the third category, 39. Let me explain. The reason I say that is he's got a handoff for the rest of the year. Tennessee on putt, 8.37 to go. And Tennessee hanging on to a 16-point Story of the day, Tennessee's defense, Syracuse's offensive mishaps, or a combination thereof, and now the Tennessee offense will take over and try and grind a lot of that 8.37 off the clock, leading 19 to 3. Houston, out of bounds, he's sending to Reese Davis. Guys, coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to take you down to the swamp where the number one team in the land, the Mighty Gators, is getting ready for Marshall to come in. Mark White Manuel getting a ride from his teammates, the senior, trying to inspire his mates to have Marshall fear the swamp. We'll get you there in a bit. All right. Well, near the eight-minute mark of this one, and then Marshall visits the Gators. SEC with a number one team preseason, and this Tennessee team ranked eighth coming into this game. Nice rolling toss that time by Clawson. And a pretty good pick up for Bobby Gray, 20 yards. They well, have waited a long time yeah. for something to applaud when the offense is on the field. Well executed play. They sucked in Josh Thomas, the left defensive end. He's got contain. He's at the top right here. You're going to see him come down on the run. And, uh-oh, I'm going the wrong way. Nice pass by Foster. That's outside of the first pass of the game, the best one he's had. 40-yard line of Syracuse. Corey Larkin carries up some time. Corey Larkin. This is good for Tennessee in that they can get their young backs in there and get them lathered up. Corey Larkins, a redshirt freshman from Opelika, Alabama, also highly touted. Cedric Houston getting some carries, just getting lathered up, getting a feel for the football game, how it is to play at this level. Tennessee offense in the second half, 27 total yards. But the defense has made it stand up. Motion out of Tyree, and just in time to beat the play clock. Green left side. All the way to the end zone, there's room for Larkins. First Tennessee touchdown. 38 yards to the house. If you wonder why Corey Larkins was highly touted, you don't have to wonder anymore. It's about the most noise we've heard from this 107,000 in the last hour and a half. An unblocked tackler in the hole, a stutter step inside, and a bolt back to the outside, and about a 4-4 down the sideline. And Mr. Larkins has established himself as a guy who can play. And once again, Tennessee's a man short on a special team. That's the third time today. Coach Fulmer will not be pleased with that. Alex Walls keeps his PAT streak going. 50 in a row without a miss. Corey Larkins, 100-meter champ for the state of Alabama. This kind of speed. On the track or on the football field, it kills. It's just about killed Syracuse's hopes. All-America true freshman, Cedric Houston. The all-time Arkansas high school touchdown score. The answer is no. Uh, the first time <laughs> I, I've encountered Tennessee, honest to goodness, since 1960 when I was a freshman at Georgia Tech. We played them every year when I was a player. And I coached them. I've never seen them without great depth. Wide receiver, tailback, and quarterback. Well, I asked 
Coach Fulmer that when we were talking to him. It, are you ever in the thought process of a real rebuilding mode? I mean, it never seems like Tennessee is. Every year there's maybe 20, 25 teams that have a legitimate shot for a national title, and Tennessee is always there because they have that depth. Except last year when they lost five juniors to the NFL draft, and I said, did you expect all right, five? Right. He said, no, and that was tough. And that football, that is not a good team. Well, that kind yeah. of, it's not windy. Yeah. Kind of sums up the day, yeah, huh? It's just a bad team. <laughs> a bad team? Yeah, you got a, you, you got a you bad, bad team? What went out of the lock down the line? You got a bad team? So watch, just watch this. See, that's a bad tee. Oh, Sliding oh, oh, the wrong oh, angle. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sing, Mike. All right. I didn't really hit the key though. Really. So Leonard Scott over the hole for Colton. There's a hole. Return. Out across the 20. And Monroe. Tad Golden made the tackle. Larkin shows not only speed here, but marvelous football instinct. Nice block by the lead blocker, but number six, McLean, is right there in the hole, and he has left a bit of his equipment on the field with a little inside and back out and then smoke down the sideline. Nice play for the first touchdown for Larkin. 98 National Championship team had Jamal Lewis, Travis Henry, and Travis Stevens. Now Stevens at the head of this tailback group. Anderson with a man open, beating double coverage, and home, Johnny Morant for a touchdown. 74-yard touchdown for Syracuse. Now, we've been hard on Morant. He's dropped balls today all day long. He has not looked good. But that was a tough catch. That's hard to adjust looking up over your head. Two defenders there. A nice throw by R.J. Anderson and Syracuse. We could argue is back in this game somewhat if they can get them stopped. If they can go for two and then get it back if stranger things have happened. Well, we just saw the first college touchdown by Larkins. Morant's second collegiate catch. Both of them in this game. And it goes 74 yards and home. And Teddy Gaines can't believe it. So, 26-9 Tennessee. Anderson rolling on the try for two. Out of room and then turns back, looks into the end zone. There's a marker down as Manley hangs on. Not going to get that to Graham Manley, but he may come up with this two-point conversion depending on the flag. I think you might have a might have a lineman downfield, possibly. Yep. I think, it was, I think it was I think it was Kevin Sampson number 74 once once Anderson started rolling I think the lineman was taken off to help block for him and then Anderson pulled up and threw the ball well that's an old Syracuse play Donovan McNabb worked it on Tennessee in 98 Pascaloni cannot believe it a lineman getting downfield it's a full sprint right and the last option on it, if everybody's covered to the sprint outside, is the tight end who crosses from the side of the sprint out clear to the other side. And he's almost always wide open. They've scored many, many times with that play. So this try for two will come from the eight. The errors are really almost incomprehensible in their numbers. Nine. Orange and Henry. 70 yards. Anderson through the hands of Maurice Jackson. Probably going to be hit immediately if he makes that catch. Two point conversion. No good. Rashad well, Baker defending. This, 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 DB never wants to let a receiver behind him, obviously, but when you're up 23 points, you can't let someone get behind you. Went for the inside fake. Good job by Moran going inside, then back outside. But the safety coming over the top. Never, ever, ever can you let anybody get past you. Safety's job is to be deeper than the deepest in that situation. But he was also complacent, figuring there's no way they're going to throw the ball that well. And Teddy's in good shape. Teddy was not in good shape. First college touchdown for the sophomore from Parsippany, New Jersey. Parade All-America. They did not redshirt him last year, even though 
he never caught a ball. He practiced all year with the first team, so they didn't consider the freshman year wasted, even though it cost him one full season of eligibility. One of the top three receivers in the country the year he was recruited. And the latest injury question for Syracuse is Keith Thump Belton. Looks like Thump might have the same kind of injury that Troy Noons has. Hopefully it won't be a break. Well, 6.13 left. Syracuse, remember now, they've blown two timeouts. So they only have one left. And if this game gets close, that is going to come back, can come back to haunt you. Well, we all know the odds on it getting close are not very good. They're going to have to recover an onside score, recover an onside score, and recover an onside and score. That's hard. I thought you were just stuttering there for a minute. Three times, huh? I stutter a lot, but not that time. Yeah. Neil Fulmer, the winningest active coach in college football by percentage. 82.4%. Onside kick return by Parker. All the way to the 16 of Syracuse. And only LaTroy Oliver prevented that from being a touchdown. It's 30 yards on an onside kick. And that was a fantastic kick, Bill, the special team that you are. I mean, that did the, the, the quick hop and then the big long hop going over 10 yards. Look at that thing up in the air. That's exactly what you want. Parker just picked it out of the air. What an athletic play that was. Nobody went after the football. When that ball crosses 10 yards, it's anybody's ball. Nobody on the Syracuse team went for the ball. They just assumed that Parker would not catch it. And there should have been a safety right on the spot to keep him from running down the sideline to the 16-yard line. Tennessee at 26-9. Larkin again getting loose this time around the right corner. Two carries in a row, two touchdowns. Now, this is supposed to be an inside play with Weary, the left guard, pulling to his right and kicking out, which he does fairly well. In fact, he's demonstrating he's going to pull right there. Look at the kick out. But the little guy bounces outside the fullback, and he has such incredible speed, he just runs by everybody. And the contained man for Syracuse was not where he was supposed to be. McLean beat for the second time for a touchdown. Number six, the safety. Just stayed at bounds. What a breathtaking last 10 yards burst from Larkins there. Walls for the PAP. And again, gets to enjoy looking up at the big replay board and reliving his second collegiate touchdown at 33-9, Tennessee. Back to back carries for Tennessee touchdowns, 33-9. six-minute mark. Jackson. On the return is a Jackson on every turn. Florida State, Reese Davis. Oh, I don't know, Dave. Florida State starting to show that considerable muscle. Nick Maddox, you know, he's bounced around tailback to wide receiver. Back at tailback goes 51 yards to the house here. A few moments later, he caught a 27-yard touchdown pass from Chris Ricks. It's 31-6 almost at the half. In just a few moments. We're going to get you down to the swamp as soon as you guys finish up. But Coach May's people getting lathered up. I, I think that's what those people are doing. <laughs> They're already lathered up. Is that up. what you call that? <laughs> Need to do some sit ups. RJ Anderson with the uh, sweep and Walter Reyes, redshirt freshman from Strutters, Ohio, with his first carry. Boy, this schedule uh, is probably the toughest Syracuse has ever faced, and against ranked opponents, which they have most of the way. They were fine in 98, kind of the McNabs last year but since then this is coming into the day they've lost all five against ranked opponents averaging less than seven points and only 221 total yards and from here it does not get easier what really makes this the toughest schedule ever for syracuse was the fact that as this mark off goes against them paul pasqualoni allowed his team to vote on whether they wanted to play that kickoff game against georgia tech at the meadowlands last week 
and they voted strongly that they wanted to do it. They already had this trip to Tennessee, Auburn after East Carolina and Central Florida, three straight at home, but none of those gimmies at all. And then the conference trips include the top three preseason picks in the Big East. They go to Pittsburgh, to West, uh, to uh, Virginia Tech, and to Miami. Wow. So all together, four top ten opponents, none of them in the Carrier Dome, nine were in bowls last year. Non-conference opponents all told 41 and 19, a combined record 2,000. You know, it, it doesn't surprise me that the players would vote to play. I mean, you, you don't find players turning down a chance to play or turning down a chance at some competition, Bill. I mean, did that surprise you at all? They would turn I, I, I would have been shocked had it not been a unanimous vote to play them. Well, especially uh, playing in, in the state of New Jersey. Right. A place where uh, Syracuse has uh, made a living recruiting. They've done very well in New Jersey. And, and a lot of the guys are from there, and they wanted to go. They wanted to go play in front of their folks. Pastor Lunder said that, I think half-joking, that was my mistake for letting yeah. them vote. But they were so into it that he decided, along with the rest of the coaches, that we need to uh, build off their positive attitude and their willingness to sacrifice to get ready for that early game. Rambling throw incomplete, intended for Leverett. We'll kick it away with 5.30. Well, if Dandy Don were here, he would sing, Turn Out the Light. The party's over. He would. He not to sing anymore. I, I beg you, Mike. Right. Don't do that. You just reach over and unplug his headset. There's noons with the chip phone and... But I think the message that you're that you're conveying, Dave, with this schedule thing is that the Syracuse staff and team have a tremendous job. Good kick. Matthew Parker up. Concern of about 9 yards, 31. 5 minutes and 15 seconds to go. 47 yarder that time. So now for Tennessee. They go to Arkansas next week, and Arkansas coming off win over UNLV, but their offense was very inept. Their defense played very strong, much like Syracuse in their first game, so Tennessee kind of getting the same taste as far as how an offense and a defense have played for their opponent. We have a game 9 Eastern, 8 Central from Fayetteville next week, and then they go to Florida, and they have not won in Gainesville in 30 years, 1971. Like I said, this offense needs to be out there in the morning about 6 if they can go to Gainesville in two weeks. LSU, Georgia, Alabama after that. Tennessee does not have easy pickings in 2001. Oh, Travis Stevens back up. Getting some carries here in the second half, and he's mostly rested. This time, Derek Kinsley, true freshman out of Marietta, Georgia. There's a uh, there's a story about uh, Coach Bear Bryant. He had a team that played against Southern Miss and didn't play well, but they won. And he had them out there at 6:30 the next morning on Sunday morning. They practiced till Sunday school time. Then he said, "Any of you guys that are Christians, y'all go on to church. The rest of us gonna keep practicing." He said every one of them converted on the spot. <laughs> Oh, what a great method of evangelism that way. Bear doesn't get enough credit for that part of his uh, effectiveness. <laughs> the middle on second down and seven. Should be enough for a first for Kinsley. We go down below to Michelle. Well, since you guys have been doing a little singing upstairs, I thought I would chime in with this note. Inside the Tennessee locker room, there are a number of inspirational phrases painted on the wall. One of them says, Let's have fun, let's win, and let's sing in the locker room. Now, I think they're probably going to win. I don't know how fun it's been, and I definitely don't think they're going to sing in the locker room, but let's hope if they do, go like they don't sound like you. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> Michelle, that, that offends me and hurts me deeply. All right, maybe it doesn't, but you know what? She's right. They are not going to sing in this locker room. This is going to be a yay, we won. Coaches, I would imagine, are going to be working a little bit tonight, and you're right, Bill. I agree with you, the players are going to be watching some film, getting over their uh, bumps and bruises, and getting after it tomorrow. The best time to jump a football team is when they win. And Absolutely. Play. Absolutely. Coach Chavis, he doesn't have as much to say about his defense because they played hard and reasonably well, but the offense has got so much work to do if they expect to go to Florida. And, of course, they still got to play Arkansas. That's no gimme. Uh, John Henderson led defensive line. We talked about the outset being 
so unusual in that they are dominant against the run and they rushed the passer so well. And they lived up to their goal. They did, but they really didn't get much competition. I mean, Syracuse has the kind of talent and the scheme that could have given them a hard time, and yet Syracuse never gave itself a chance. I really feel like I need to redeem myself. Play, play some music so I can sing or something. Who are you talking to? <laughs> Michelle, I guess she's the one who ripped me, so. I think Michelle's gone to the parking lot, and I don't think anybody else is going to crank up a guitar for you. No, I can't reach it, but you can. His volume button is right over there. <laughs> Second down and nine. Hensley. He sat until this Tennessee possession, and that one goes 13 yards. He's got another first down. So, I don't know the way it's finishing up. Maybe Tennessee will have something to sing about. Yeah, I still think, again, we have a lot of backups in here, and I think they made enough mistakes in this game that will keep them from singing and keep uh, Coach Fulmer on their back pretty quick. The coaches will absolutely work them over. Look, we won the game, fine, but don't think for a second that this is going to be acceptable, and they will use this to good advantage. Fulmer will be 50 and 4 a lifetime here in New York City. And all four of those losses to teams rank at least six in the country or better. Cedric Houston. In a true freshman hailback tag team now with Pinsley. And I'll make this observation. The offensive line that was considered to be a strength coming into the season has not knocked many people off the ball today for Tennessee. These runs have been individual efforts by these young backs bouncing to the outside and making long runs. So the guys up front got some work to do. The quarterback's got some work to do. And um, I assure you, in the kicking game, I mean, they've had three occasions with 10 men on the field. So they got plenty of things to address. They've gone five deep at tailback. Stevens, Larkin, they both scored. Houston, Jabari Davis, and now Kinsley. Syracuse reacts well that time on the carry by Houston. And we check in with Reese Davis from Virginia Tech. All right, guys, some terrible news for Lee Suggs, the outstanding tailback from Virginia Tech. Tore his left ACL and also tore the medial meniscus ligament. An MRI showed that today. Now, he is going to have surgery, arthroscopic, on Monday to repair the medial ligament. If the ACL injury is determined to be an old injury, there is a chance he could come back this year. If it is a fresh one that occurred today in the 52 win over UConn, Lee Suggs will be done for the season. Some terrible news for the Hokies. We're going to get you down to the swamp in just a few minutes. Florida and Marshall, they have started to play. The Gators returning a punt. And we'll keep you up to date on everything going on there until Tennessee and Syracuse are finished, gentlemen. All right, we're down to the final minute here, Reese, and Tennessee will uh, take another season-opening win, 33 to nine. Boy, is that uh, that bad news for Virginia Tech? Though I had a chance to talk to their coach Frank Beamer a few days ago, and he really talked up Suggs and Andre Davis, their wide receiver out there, as guys who will be able to carry this offense a bit because Michael Vick is gone, and to lose that as a weapon really, really hurts. And we saw his son Shane Beamer, who's a uh, a graduate assistant here on the Tennessee staff on the defensive side. He was at Georgia Tech last year getting a real good football education, young Shane Beamer. He'll be a good coach, too, like his dad. Just hope the best for Lee and hope there's a quick recovery. Tennessee's called his last time out with a fourth and one at 27 seconds to go. Well, let's look at the positives for them. They get the win. They get the first game under their belt. We, we've already talked about how they're certainly going to hear it in the film room. Uh, doesn't look like they've had any injuries. We haven't seen anybody really go off that, that looked like it was a bad injury. So, again, you look at the positives. And Coach Firm will do that, too. It's not like, you know, it's going to be Armageddon in the locker room and in the, in the film room. They are going to get on these guys. But they will point out the positives because if they are going to be 1-0, they're in the top 10. Those are positive things, that, positive things that they can build on. I do think, though, Mike, that they're going to have to address this air of complacency that we we sense throughout the football game because they're going to look at the guys, the young guys are going to look at this score and say, you know, we really are pretty good, and they did not play well offensively uh, except for the outstanding efforts of the young tailback. Travis Stevens, the old tailback, the senior, 14 carries for 111 yards and a touchdown. Casey Clawson, 13 of 26, 132 yards, a touchdown. And an interception. And 
the fourth down try here, needing one. And they'll get it. And as soon as they uh, get the chains move, that should do it for Syracuse and Tennessee. So the Orangemen start 0-2, this unprecedented schedule facing Paul Pasqualoni and the Orangemen. Three straight at home, but Central Florida, East Carolina, and Auburn all capable of uh, pulling off the road win in the Carrier Dome. And the next time they hit the road, will be Big East play at Rutgers. Will Fulmer goes to 85 and 18 as the head coach of Knoxville, 15 4 at home. As Tennessee starts with a victory, 33 to 9, our final. So, so long from Knoxville, we're getting the balls winning. 33 to 9. For Mike Golden, Bill Curry, and Michelle Tafoya. Dave Barnett reminding you, Marshall in Florida up next. This has been a